everyone, we are on. Welcome to another live stream with Brian Tech Therapy. I'm going on a date. It's status. gotta look perfect. I'm going on a date. It's gotta look perfect. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> What's up, brother? You not hear me? You got it. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, Everyone, I can hear you. Audio is good. Audio check. Audio Mike check. check. Mike check. I, I have to say, I, I'm coming on trying to dress up for Valentine's. And the first thing Brian's like, hey, how do you like my, my Valentine's Day outfit? Brian's response, you look like an undertaker. <laughs> no, I look like the undertaker. <laughs> oh, you do? I thought I look like the undertaker. <laughs> or, 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 I'm star or I'm starring in it. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see you guys. Get into the mood. How's everybody? Get into the mood. Lisa, of appreciate course, it. Of thank course. you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, David. Say hi to everyone. Culture of Ghosts. Up, hey, David? here's a new name. Unless he's one of those. That's a great name, old, Oldies but goodies and changed his name. So thank you. All you new ones, come on by. Hey, Big Lou. Thank you. Already hitting the like Indep button. Independent, you, independent Dreams. Awesome. Always a positive person. What's up, Independent Dreams? Always BBS. positive. And look, up, people SG? are buying Always the 100 inch TVs. He thinks it's going to impress the ladies. Well, we have our thoughts because this is very interesting. When I uh, posted this question earlier a lot of disagreement about what might impress the ladies and what might not and of course lisa's here she is officially a lady so she can <laughs> tell us up, whether or not this would impress <laughs> us and of course lisa's also an enthusiast so who knows right and and, well, and, and, well, and if we have that. any if we have any ladies in the audience sometimes we have a record yes, two do. or three Say hello, Hiding. please. This is this is your Lurking. stream. Hi, Lise. They're, they're too afraid to speak up because they're afraid I might I might be cruel and and mock them. But I won't, ladies. It's I'm friendly. Uh, you are absolute Come gentlemen. On. Yes, we, we don't bite. Or well, maybe you should ask Lisa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's let's jump into this. Because okay, so let's just set the context. Many of you may be married, may have a significant other, may not be able to buy a TV without the approval of the ladies, right? And for you ladies out there, what is it you're looking for? And oftentimes that TV may not be what you, the guy, wants. Because I know Brian, I always talk about 4,000 nits or certain brightness, impact, HDR, gaming. But if we take a step back, do the ladies care about any of these things? Is the image quality good enough? So I'm going to bring to the table my experience with my family, where I have a daughter, I have a wife, <laughs> and what they like is very different from what I like, as well as kind of share with you some of the comments I have from you know lady viewers or guys with ladies who have DM'd me on the, on the side saying, Oh, hey, on the side, this? baby, they this? sliding in. <laughs> What's so, up, FOMO? Hey, you know what? Got any pictures? <laughs> <laughs> don't send I, any I, pictures bro hey don't get me in trouble <laughs> i, I want to get this tv but maybe not because the wife says this is your limit whether it's a budget whether it's a size so let us know normally is it a size thing is it a budget thing but brian let me start you off because you two are married you have daughters how has your tv buying experience been when it comes to what you want and then maybe what the ladies want well, I think as we loosen up a little bit, we'll get into how it was as a single guy, but as a married guy, as a single guy, they pretend to care, depending on if they want to pursue you. Wait, oh my God, wait, you have a nice wait, TV. Wait, I love this around town. Wait, they <laughs> pretend to care. Yeah, I like, love football. I love, I always get, I love watching you game. It's amazing. I'm like, you don't like to watch me game. <laughs> um, as a married person, I will tell you, they do not care at all. Uh, I could switch a TV around, tell them that this one was kind of low budget. This one's the best in the world. And they're like, yeah, I think I might like the other one better. <laughs> so, or they just don't care. Um, so it is funny when I talk about purchasing something, uh, in order to get that thing bought, you start to just send the features out there. Oh, it's got this, it's got that. The other one doesn't have this. And after a while, you just wear them down. And it's like, yeah, whatever. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you, oh I, I love that. you wear them down. Look. I, this is your latest update to the TV. Look, just get whatever. I don't want to hear it, right? So I, I may have done this in one of my videos years ago. Is the best thing you can do is throw it out there a year in advance. Let them know, hey, you know what? These new things are coming out. Like, you guys want a G4? <laughs> but, you know, my TV's not doing well, sweetheart. You, then you get the no. You get the, I don't care if you're the breadwinner. Right away, it's like, it's ridiculous. Like, I know. I would never ask. 
And then you're like, you know, this one over here is getting a little, I don't know, something's wrong with it, I think. <laughs> and then, then your wife would hear us in the background. Stop listening. I've already had, I think, maybe a couple of the guys here said to stop listening to us. <laughs> and then about a year later, they're like, Jesus, just buy it. Fine, just get it. You're like, but it takes about a year of just planting that and then just grinding it down and saying, ah, you know, if the TV might have an accident, push it off the stand. <laughs> If they want the G5, it starts now. Like, yeah, it's right too now. late if you want the G4. I mean, if, if you want the G4, it, that boat may have sailed. You should have started last year. You too late. John Hooper's comment, yeah. chocolate alcohol. I'm thinking, so before you actually Stop, make John. the purchase, start drinking the alcohol, introduce her to the alcohol, and then show her the bill. Honey, it's on its way. But, you know, she's a little bit imbibing, right? So she's like, oh, What's on its way, honey? <laughs> so independent dream says, tell her it's got the greatest features. It's more like this dreams. Tell them be like, Hey, it won't function without these features. <laughs> Make up something where they're going to shut off Netflix. If we don't buy this new TV, I know you like Netflix. I know you like acorn, but the acorn on this one, phenomenal. I know you like them UK shows. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta posit it's called positive manipulation is what you need. <laughs> It's going to show up any day now. We had a conversation before the show, right? So, you know, Brian and I talk about the, the theme and like, wait, you know, now that we think about it, what, what are these great TVs that the ladies do like? And the ladies actually do have a preference. So, so on the one <laughs> hand, when you're the one buying the TV, she's like, okay, you know what? You bought the TV. Why do you keep on watching FOMO? I mean, I understand when you're doing the research to buy the TV, you already bought the TV. Why is he still on your YouTube? Because we're clowns and we appreciate. We don't juggle or anything, but I appreciate. I love when people say to me, FOMO, Brian, thank you so much. Because of you, I bought this three years ago. And I, I tell you right now, before we get you know even funnier, because this is going to be a loose one, um, I want to thank you from both me and FOMO. The, the, the messages we've been getting from you guys as far as watching us after you buy, it means the world to us because the community aspect is what makes us do these live streams it makes us do these these videos that i do where you guys are why well, premiere my videos me and fomo do streams it really is hanging out with you guys it's never hard and we only stop them because we have to it's not because we want right. to so when somebody in fomo i can say this when somebody says well i don't know how you guys are going to stream for that long we're like what do you mean <laughs> Me and this guy can go all day. Don't worry about us. So I really appreciate you guys. We love you guys. And uh, it's and this is our creativity at work. I mean, I have a Valentine's Day one Wednesday uh, that we're putting up. Um, so we work our stuff in tandem. We come up with ideas together. And we actually just don't have enough time for the stuff we have planned. So we, I love that you guys are here. So tell your wife or husband. I'm sorry. <laughs> and what I didn't expect was, you know, I... I came into this video thinking, okay, these are the kind of TVs that the, ladies would, that the ladies would like. But what Brian and Keep It With The Jones and, and John Hooper has suggested is before you even talk about the TV, you have to get them into the mood. Brian, wear them down, <laughs> right? That was his theme. John Hooper, ply them with alcohol and Keep oh It With The Jones. God. Lose John trying to pull the, the Bill Cosby, <laughs> right? And then oh, it's so much for monetizing right? this. So, but you only do it when they're watching like their shows, right? Obviously. Oh, so Tristan, you take it out. Just Tristan takes it just a little bit, and then like has his son. His son's like a wrestler. He's all jacked up. Just kind of bump into it. Oh my God, Mom, this thing's not working. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "What's wrong with the TV?" Because you know the ladies, I, and and this is why I love the ladies. Look, I don't care. Just fix it. I don't care why it's broken. I don't care. Just get it fixed. And so <laughs> you the, guy new one. Like, the guy's like, you know, repairs are more expensive than the TV itself. We gotta buy a new one, right? And, and we're gonna get her a set of pot pans. I got you a nice dishwasher, sweetheart. <laughs> Come on. That's bro. that's the other trick. By the way, honey, do you also need something replaced? Like, how about I get a blender with that, right? So, right, you soften the blow with a blender or what or a toaster oven, air fryer. That's the latest thing. Like my wife loves the air fryer we got for Christmas, right? So, hey, hon, you know, the, the air fryer is also for sale. So you got to, I think you have to bundle it. Bundle it with something that she wants. Air fryer, new headphones, right? Well, and John, and when John, um, uh, when John said, you know, get her warmed up, I told her, my, you guys remember Tom and Jerry, you guys are old enough when he's like, my love, I love you. Set my soul on fire. A big rearing flame. Because <laughs> Tom never <laughs> talked <laughs> and it's burning. Oh, I just thought about uh, it. Maybe they should have you. you talk to the wife. 
honey, you know how we've been watching FOMO and Brian. Well, Brian's on the phone and he wants to have a word with you. And she'll be like so star. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah star right. <laughs> we got to pick so, an accent. Hey. Which one you want? You want the birdcage one? <laughs> you want the Scarface one? You want the Godfather one? Van you want Dan. the Van the Van, Van Dam one? On Trust me, your husband needs a new TV immediately to get those kicks nice and high. Yeah. <laughs> but let's say we we get past that, right? Because how we set uh, our ladies up, and I want to ask Lisa, like, what would it take for Lisa to agree to a new TV? It probably doesn't take much because we know she, oh, <laughs> she's hanging out with she, us. <laughs> she's one of us. <laughs> so she's like sold. The ladies compliant, right? She's like okay. For whatever reason, she agrees to let you buy a new TV. Then the question becomes, what is that new TV that makes her happy? Because we know what makes us happy. G4, G3, A95L, right? You know, the specs, certain sizes. But there are actually specific TVs that I think would actually make her happy. And this is something that we haven't explored. Like, is there a, a model, a brand that actually oh, does impress the ladies? And this is, is you, Brian. Yeah. Right, right, and so, so <laughs> is this true? Oh, I love you. <laughs> so I walked into, I did a Best Buy video the other day, and they had the worst uh, fireplace demo on this TV. And I was thinking to myself, no one would ever say I gotta have that, but somebody's missus would be like, "Wrap it up, <laughs> let's do it." And then FOMO show the frames, the 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 uh, you can get like the different frames. <laughs> That would look amazing. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> let's let's go to the different frames here, and, and I think this is part of the allure, right? Is uh, I mean, I mean, you look at that right here. Let's see if you can see it, right? So there you go, right? It, it makes the house look. Better. Oh my god! Look at that thing. <laughs> see, Brian laughs. This this looks just like your apartment, Brian. That's like the number one selling TV <laughs> in the world right now. <laughs> the engineer and, of the S ninety five D is like perfect. Yes, right. we'll do that one on this one. <laughs> oh, and, okay, and if you don't do this that, one, uh. and I know a lot of people are saying, "Well, my wife will never get me anything larger than a fifty-five inch, right? Like or a sixty-five, right?" So I, I kind of looked uh. into what are the uh. highest rated ones. No, well, first of all, if you guys are thinking of the frame, there's actually a deal happening. It's this is the best deal on Samsung right now for a thousand seventy-nine fifty-five inch, right? The sixty-five inch is a bit overpriced, but I went on Best Buy to see which of the frame is the wow. highest rated and it's the 75 inch and i'll show you guys there you go now it's a bit expensive so you gotta go on the side, right this is how much is that so thing three thousand oh dollars right no 4.7 is the highest rated size like the other sizes are a little bit like this one i think is like 4.5 right two thousand dollars and you guys t complain to us that tvs are expensive <laughs> Image quality on the frame, you guys know. Yeah. Contrast gotcha. ratio is one it's by average. two. <laughs> right. But three thousand dollars and they're selling like hotcakes, like 260 <laughs> reviews, 4.7. And I yes. bet you many of them are ladies, right? Oh, because there's man. something about this where you put it against the oh. wall, people <laughs> just love it. So, Brian, you're an enthusiast. What does it tell you that a three thousand dollar TV that's not S ninety five C, S eighty nine C, or a G three is getting a four point seven? So it shows you that we don't know what we're talking about. We must. We don't know how to make any. We don't want to make any cash. But the, we we know what we like. But we shows you that the enthusiast has nothing to do with moving TVs. But whenever we're in the comments, FOMO, I would love to see your comments when someone says, "Hey, I'm thinking about the frame." I'm always like, Alex, don't do this one. <laughs> Try to give them. I'm like, ah, your wife might like it. I'm like, ah. No, I think and, I and went I, to the store. It looked like a piece of art. I'm like, it's a piece of shh. Ah. So anyway. How, well, so you 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 bring up the point where how much of this is maybe the other half saying, look, you're allowed to buy a TV, but I have to like it. He's like, well, what about this? She goes, okay, you can buy this. And he's so happy to get a TV. He doesn't care at this point, right? So maybe she's worn him down. I get divorced immediately. But I, okay, we're so, going to therapy uh, together. Uh, oh my gosh, look at that deep ass voice tonight. Now fun? here's my thing. All right, so hey, Glenn, <laughs> I think there is a better one, better than the frame that's also Samsung. I saw it at CES. This is my recommendation. It's a little understated, but it's rated even higher. Okay, are you ready? 
This is the plant is. one. The no, plant. the plant. <laughs> but you're right. This this was the plant. Yeah, that this thing looks great. even worse. <laughs> that looks like an I, Apple TV that goes on your wall. This one is rated even higher. Oh my higher god. Than the frame. So the frame was like what 4.7? This is a 4.8 in terms of reviewers, right? Uh, common man reviewers. I'm not talking about critical reviewers like myself. So <laughs> like <but> minus four. <laughs> and you gotta stop and think about this. The serif, right? Let me give you guys a closer look because I personally interior designer self here. This thing, this is why I like it so much. And I have to tell you, um, the way if you recommend those up, all year, we're done. I know. No one, no one will watch me again. Hey, remember, you this is your name. It's for the ladies. You need a serif. Right? Oh, oh my serif. God. Okay. This front looks, looks pretty good. The back looks exactly the same. The ladies will like it, and this is why. When you put it on a table, walking towards it from behind, in front of it, looks exactly like this. Where the ports are, they did such a great job keeping it concealed in a certain way that from behind, because normally the back of the TV looks terrible. Samsung designed the serif knowing that if you put it in the middle of the room and you're walking through that door and you walk behind it, you're like, oh, wow, the back looks actually pretty good too. And, and the back looks as like this without, <laughs> obviously without the, the display. But the back is clean, right? Very much like that. And so now my question is, and the image quality is actually slightly better than the frame. It's not as much of a matte uh, finish, right? Maybe satin. So the question for you guys is, would this convince your wife or a significant other, the ladies, to maybe allow you to get a 65 inch? <laughs> and again, this is not cheap. It's $14.99. Oh, no. no right? way. Bride? Come on. No. Well, worst of all, I saw the serif there too. We filmed it. And when I saw yes, it, we, we saw did. the one that was green. And they, and guys, you actually would like this because it was green and surrounded by plants and it had plants built into it. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, if I had a greenhouse, that thing would be amazing. It was all green. Then I saw this one and I thought it looked like I was going to draw up a basketball play on it. <laughs> you know, one of those big whiteboards with the with the erasable markers. I think the ladies like OLEDs because they're simplistic, they're minimalist, they're thin. Um, to me, that's the opposite of that. That's just a big white piece of plastic that i mean I, th I think the tv is pretty cool but i can't see my wife would be like what the hell is that <laughs> it looks like something I, I that belongs in the classroom <laughs> oh it looks like a chalkboard so. he just said it <laughs> second grade it looks like a chalkboard right and i agree with with someone else who said that the kids will start drawing on it so you can't have it <laughs> off right it's got to be on because you know your kids will be out there with a the marker oh look dad and started drawing on it thinking it's oh, a blackboard because no. it would be black right but at the end of the day what I think the theme is what we look for in a TV and what others may not be the same because I really think that we've come to a point where I think the TVs are almost good enough to a certain degree because I saw this article and it made me kind of think about what's important to us, but not only that, what's important to people. So I'm going to share this article with you, Brian, and you tell me if this is not where we are today. And let me see right here real quick. It is this article right here. Okay. So this is off of Display Daily, right? How the Super Bowl killed television. And the last night's is, game. Oh, trashy yes. game. Oh. So Kelsey. he's saying, look, and, and he loves TVs as, as much as the next guy in terms of black levels. I mean, this is display daily. So they go into the weeds like we do, like the best of the best. This is the latest technology. And he's like, wait a minute. Um, his experience with this TV was so bad, meaning he first had to find the Super Bowl, right? He tried to find it on Paramount and it was like kind of mixed in with Hulu, whatever it was. And then he goes, and then there were all these ads. And at the end of the day, the, the you don't even miss the deeper blacks or the color gamut. It's just a football game. And this is the most popular event of the year. And his conclusion was, why even pay over 3000 for seven fifty? I'm getting the same bad experience all around yeah. because we talk about the highest quality bit rates, all that good stuff, right? Blue K, uh, the Blu-ray, 4K, Kaleidoscape. And then you sit down, room is dark, and you see all the amazing stuff. 
But if most of what you're watching are things like the Super Bowl, Friends, Colombo, or just streaming basic stuff, I have to agree with them. I think we're there, and the 750 <clears throat> price point we're talking about is the U7K, the Q7, even the U8K is now under $900. The QM8, 65 inch, I think it's like $899. That gets us to the point where we talk about how much is too much TV? Like, are we just paying for things that if you put on a pattern, you know, this is awesome, but 99% of the content is just so badly. I don't want to say it's it's image quality is so basic that your TV exceeds anything that image quality or the creator intended for you to see anyway. Yeah. Like, Look, man, I made this for a $500 TV. You got yourself a $2,000 TV. That's overkill because it'll look good on a $500 TV as well. What are your thoughts on that yeah because you know we're guys right it's like we want an 800 horsepower car we want brembo brakes but the wife is like i just asked for a corolla what what is this mustang gt yeah said, well it's so much it's so much seconds. like people that even in the 1080p days or when 4k first came out you would try to help an elderly person and i, I had a friend who had a samsung the picture looks terrible and they actually had the coax cable plugged in they didn't use the hdmi they just had that. And then when I plugged in the HDMI, they were like, wow, that looks better, but it still doesn't look great. I'm like, cause it's 720p and the cable boxes are so far behind. We're just starting to now get, I think 4k for the Super Bowl. You're starting to see that now, but for the most part, we're going backwards as far as compression rates and you know, how things are shot and, uh, mm -hmm. effects are, are not as good because it's now made for streaming instead of the theater. So we are kind of going backwards, but we've always had more technology than content. We've always had FOMO, and I talked about this with Atmos. Um, we've all had Atmos, and we've looked for the discrete sound. In the meantime, the guy with the cheap sound bar is happy because the subwoofer pounds. When somebody kisses, it's like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> somebody shuts the door, it's like, boom. Somebody says, hey, what's up, man? It's like, boom. If you have discrete sound, if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. And I'm not sure that's right. a good thing. So I think right. to your point, the ignorance is bliss. I have guys that buy outdoor TVs for ten thousand dollars then i have guys that buy them for 500 bucks they leave them outside they put a grill cover over them when they break they throw them in the garbage well, who's the idiot <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's it is interesting ignorance is bliss and i think that's kind of what this conversation falls into i think depending on who the breadwinner is in your family uh they'd be happier if it's not expensive but when we're talking about xr clear it's not magic <laughs> it's not going to make something you know shot at no, no resolution look good but we sell that we need that 144 hertz even though we don't have a pc we need those things because there's a reason for us to, that's why they put those things in there is to make us want to buy and it works thank god and i think what independent dreams mentioned is he watched the super bowl hd antenna right digital antenna it was free over the air if it turns out the over-the-air content is good enough, we're not talking like the best 4K HDR. It could be 1080p. It could be even lower. Yeah. But if that's what you end up watching, you really shouldn't get anything more than a C3, C2, B3, B2 even, yeah. if you want to have the OLED infinite contrast or just any TCL over $700 or Hisense over $700. And I think oftentimes we forget that if you have the best TV or the best car and you're giving it bad, I want to say bad, you have like gasoline that's 85 or whatever. Yeah, not kerosene. And, and you're driving around the block in the suburbs. It has a lot of headroom that you will never see. Yeah. So oftentimes maybe the missus gets it right because she's like, you really want, I mean, I understand size. Right? She's like, okay, I want. I know you want a bigger TV. Okay. The size immediately impresses. Right? Oh my gosh, it's 98 inch or 85 inch coming from a 55, but beyond the immediate impact of size, the subtleties, Brian and I do this all the time. We have to choose specific content, whether it's Jennifer Gala yeah. on YouTube yep. or, yep. or demos from Samsung LG on YouTube or some of the best and most difficult scenes that was shot specifically for comparisons by Stacey Spears and his team or movies that maybe one out of a thousand movies that we use pan mad max right that the five the handful yeah. of movies that actually hit above 2000 nits that's it that's what we do for our reviews to separate it like the sats right 
if you score above a 1200, you're smart enough to live life. I mean, yeah. but then there's the 1590 out of 1600, right. To, to get into the top, top Harvard. It's a good but analogy. At the end of the day, it, you don't need all of that. And sometimes no. it's these streams that make, allows me to take a step back and not get you guys to overspend. Speaking yeah. of overspending, thank you for the super chat, Mac. <laughs> Hi guys, wonder if the Sony might start putting a third yeah, this, gen. This is going to be a nightmare. If that actually the happens. L later this year, or release the N85M at the end of the year. So this is so great. It's unpacking speculation. We don't know what Sony's going to do, right? So mm -hmm. hopefully at Sony's launch, we'll find out more detail. This is what I believe. First of all, Samsung Display stopped making second gen panels months ago. So once Sony sells out all of its A95L with a second gen, if they continue to sell A95L, they have no choice but to use a third gen panel. Yeah. So that's just common sense. I mean, they mm -hmm. have to sell something, right? The question is whether they will relabel it as an A95M, but essentially everything else being the same, and then using software to make sure you're getting the same experience. Yep. The issue I have, and, and, and you and I talked about this, is owners of the A95L will be up in arms if later owners of the A95L have a better TV. So for public- You have, to, you PR, have to delineate it, yeah. You gotta change the name to A93M, or yep. just like the A95K, X95K <clears throat> became the X93L. Yep. Essentially yep. the same TV, slightly better, but not better enough yep. to deserve calling it an upgrade because it's still missing XR clear. The yeah. A95L, my prediction should be relabeled as the something like the A93 something or other, because if they say A95L, but it ends up using the third gen panel and people will know, they're all gonna say, oh, I should have waited. And then people up in arms, right? But that's well, why- And more, import what more importantly- they gonna do? Well, more importantly, if they do that, you'd hate to hear that, but you do have to raise the price then mm -hmm. because you can't have somebody that just bought an A94. Well, they do that with GPUs. You'll have a, you know, a 1080, then a 1080 Super. And more times than not, the performance is greater, but not name the exact same thing in the same year. So they're in a weird spot with that. If they do that, they're going to have to either throttle it back, which they may do, um, or they would name it something else, A95 LX, and then, but you'd have mm -hmm. to add money to it and make it more expensive, which I don't think people are going to be happy about because they're going to say, well, that's still an A95 L. So to your point, they'd have to do like a half year almost and cut one price down and raise the other. They, they can't release right. them the same price or have somebody get in there and buy a brand new one for cheaper. That'll really be a problem. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I think that's what they'll do if that and happens. So just to confirm for you, Mac, for sure, they have to use a third gen panel, but whether it's A95L with a third gen panel or yeah. not, you know, are they gonna relabel it? That's another matter, but it'll be the same, everything else. The processor's the same, the casing, the features, everything about it will be yeah. the same, except it's third gen and they'll have to optimize the software to make sure the third gen works, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But you're not going to get a better processor. Uh, so if if they don't release a new QD OLED speculation, if they do release a new QD OLED, then the A95L would be the shortest running model I've ever seen from Sony, which yeah. I, I don't think it's likely. And just for you guys to understand, the QD OLEDs did not sell a lot last year across the board from all the makers. Now, maybe the 77 inch from Sony sold out because they didn't order enough. But overall, Samsung Display did not move enough of them to make a huge, well, it was a slight loss even. And Samsung Electronics themselves are like, well, we didn't sell as many OLED TVs as we wanted. So this year, yeah. you know, we're going to try to focus maybe on QLED, Neo QLED. So all of us, we're talking in an echo chamber where we feel the QD oh OLED is the best. Absolutely. And shockingly, oh, yeah. why, are, why isn't everyone getting S89C or S90C, 77 yeah. inch? It's such an amazing deal at $1,700, $1,800 or $2,000. When people's budget for $2,000, they're going to one of our earlier uh, commenters, 98 inch, 100 inch, same price. Yeah. And well, it's it might, good enough. It, well, it might even be simpler than that, FOMO, where at that tricky size of 65 maybe even 75 mm -hmm. those other tvs i know we're looking at 100 inch tvs we're still enthusiasts but i think the common person i mean i tell film all the time when i'm filming at best buy i must sell five or six tvs mm -hmm. and they're always looking at the q7 they're always looking at not i mean the q70 for or the qn70 
or something like that. It's always the one that's right in front of them. They look at the price tag first. It's only when I walk them to the S90 that they're like, wow. But when they do look at the 65 and the 55, and that's why Sony does this at their pad phone. Well, they put the, the X80K, mm-hmm. their largest, not a lot of local dimming in there. Then they put the A80L above it. They look at the A80L like, wow, that's beautiful, but it's only 65. Then there's this 85 inch TV that's two grand or 1500. Like, screw it. Give me that. And to your point about demo material, real quick, I want to stay on demo for a second. Yeah. We don't show movies because of copyright. So, as much, I don't risk it. Um, I have had my videos taken down. When people say all movies look good with demo material, that is not accurate. We compare them side by side for a reason. One TV at a different level with the best content definitely doesn't look as good as another. But I also use demo material with black bars so we can really see. In store, they don't do that. Everything is full screen FOMO. So some of these TVs without local dimming, like the TCLs of old, do look pretty good because they're picture to picture. You know, it's all the nature of 4K. And for Mm -hmm. the price, they really go for that. And to your point, that Super Bowl and to that article's point, they're like, hey, as long as it's full screen, they just won't know until they get into some streaming with some dark Dolby vision that they're going to go, what is going on with the corners of my TV? So here's a question then. Command dot clink. <laughs> yeah, he has a great, great question because we're talking, okay, larger, same price, but the larger ones have to be LCD TVs to get that maximum value. And his question, I'm really excited to see the new Sony Mini LED, but can they improve the not so hot picture when viewing off angle on LCD TVs? Isn't TCL supposed to have some new tech to improve that? And yes, the answer is that they do have some new tech. We don't know if it'll be on the new Sony or not. Uh, Hopefully it is. But at the end of the day, off angle viewing, Brian, when you buy a TV, that's not an OLED. Is this a consideration or has it ever been a consideration for you? It hasn't, but I can prove that it is. Uh, Sony Z9G, uh, Z9F, you guys remember the Z9F? They, they should, right? And I'm not even sponsored by them. <laughs> um, the Z9D that you guys remember was Sony's best TV to date. The viewing angles were actually worse than you remember. Me and Rob, Brennan talk about it. <clears throat> Due to their focus groups FOMO, the ladies or whoever said, I really don't like watching my TV from the side. And that viewing angle was a big deal. My TVs have been big for a long time. Viewing angle is not a concern for me. Um, I don't watch TV from the kitchen, but a lot of people, that's what they wanted, which is why they did that XY viewing angle with the rainbows. And um, the contrast ratio got hit for that. And it shows you that what you've said, FOMO, the enthusiast wants the contrast ratio. The people buying TVs are more interested in the thickness and the viewing angles so just think about that they they don't care about the contrast ratio as long as they can watch it in the sunlight or if they can watch it from outside i guess but it really does affect us and i think that's what you're going to see this year with the s95d uh it's amazing technology i'm really hard on it because i don't like oleds losing any contrast ratio but i think the thing's going to sell out because fomo mentioned when we see that in the showroom and everything else is reflecting that thing is going to be perfect yeah and SG is exactly the kind of individual we we're talking about, right? The S89, S89C is like $1,800 at Best Buy. That's the 77-inch mm-hmm. QD OLED, right? One of my editor's choice, very similar to S90C. Yet he was willing to pay a little bit more, $2,000 for the U76N, which, by the way, is still sold out. Um, and it's a 100-inch more. TV. 200, 200 more. It's $2,000. $2,000. Wow, S89C is 1800 Now, it was 2000 They dropped it two hundred. And I mean, imagine that insult to Samsung or, or Best Buy. They're trying to push this 77-inch QD OLED that all the critical reviewers love. Myself, Classy, KG, you. We felt the S90C slash S89C was the oh, yeah. TV to buy. And he's not saving money. He's actually spending more to get bigger, slightly yeah. worse viewing angles. But then it kind of goes to, uh, I want to throw this up there real quick. And <clears throat> here we go. Okay. The fate of the panel industry in 2024 depends on three factors. And I want to go specifically to this. There is a replacement wave anticipated for TVs in 2024 because of three high-profile sporting events, right? European Cup, 
the Copa America and the Olympics. I think uh, two of them are soccer slash football for the rest of the world and the Olympics for obvious reasons. People want to buy a new TV for the Olympics. I remember there was a huge push at the Tokyo Olympics for 8K. That didn't happen. The Japanese bought 8K, but no one else did. But yeah. this year, people are going to buy a new TV to watch this. And I'm thinking they're buying a new TV, but they're not replacing it with an OLED. They might be going with what SG is doing a larger and not just a little bit larger we're talking 98 inch 100 inch larger in the usa i understand the rest of the world that may not be feasible but if we are on a replacement wave this year what would happen to the oled tv industry if everyone just started going 100 inch 98 inch and to this point i was reading over samsung electronics recent earnings call so they finished their q3 earnings january 31st and then they started telling their investors what they want to do in 2024 and they were very clear there is an interest in larger tvs we got to follow the trend we're going to release large tvs and lifestyle tvs that's what you want lifestyle nothing about key. saving money <clears throat> it's about <throat> You want to put your money in either larger TVs or lifestyle, which is the Valentine's Day TVs, either the Frame or the Serif or the Cero. Brian, what's going to happen to all the TVs if this is the direction that people are going? Because TV makers are just going to respond to the people. Well, what you said, two points. Um, <clears throat> for you guys that are watching, um, OLED was everybody's dream TV for years, right? FOMO, Plasma, OLED. I feel like they got affordable. They were really hot for about two years. And then we thought LED was dead. I mean, really, as far as last year, like, okay, we're done. QD OLED MLA. But the lifestyle part is so important to people. The ease, like, I just got a, a tablet, a Galaxy um, S9 Ultra, I believe it's called. Nearby sharing videos from a phone to a tablet to the TV. You think it's kind of gimmicky until you start utilizing it. And then when it doesn't work once, you're like, whoa, 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 what is this? I have to actually take the SD card out of the camera. I can't just throw it over there. So that lifestyle part, especially with Samsung's looking to do FOMO, where you walk in and maybe it's not great, but yeah. whatever's playing on your phone goes right to the TV. It's that functionality is a lot like receivers years ago, FOMO, where it was like, how many watts is it? I don't know, but it has airplay. It was more about the, the stickers that were on top of it. It had airplay, it had Spotify. If you look at receivers now, those stickers don't talk about power anymore. They talk about the little functions that, that are there, Spotify, whatever. So I think the lifestyle thing, and then I think size is back. I think people say to themselves, hey, I always wanted a big TV. I personally would never buy one at 100 inches, but that's only because we switch our TVs out, and I am a picture quality enthusiast, so I just have a hard time. I mean, this, this Sony... And, and you're a gaming uh, enthusiast. Picture and gaming plus gaming. And I have this fight with people all the time because there's, there's conclusive proof that local dimming doesn't change when gaming. I do not agree with that. I do think that the processing is disabled somewhat in game mode. A lot of things that we're going to love from this 8K upscaler, from the AI upscaler FOMO, that's not going to be in gaming. I'm hoping that the uh, X95M's prototype, that local dimming will be in the gaming. I have yeah. a feeling it's not going to be. So for a lot of the things I love, I can't go there yet. And as much as I love the best ML and look for them, we see the best TVs in the world. Mm -hmm. I've gamed on them. You put an OLED next to it. It is not close. So making it a hundred inches doesn't now, make no, that. No. Let's take a step back because I think. Oh, here we go. Look at you. Look at no, your no, fighting stands I ready. You're like, you. I saw you at CES, right? I, I have yep. to, I have to paint the picture for you all. We're at CES. We're at the high sense booth. And Brian's like, that's a giant TV and it's a gaming TV. It looks great. Oh my gosh. It's the 100 inch U8K. U8K. Yeah. It was set up for gaming because I just wanted to show people what does it look like to game on their flagship mini LED of last year at 100 inches. Now, obviously, we didn't have the latency measurements out or anything, but console <clears throat> gaming, which is what it was set up for, it yeah. actually looked pretty compelling. And, you know, people were free to sit there and play, right? They had the seats and everything. Yeah. Now, Brian. Well, here's the let's caveat. Start with that, and then given to crypto colleges, right? A hundred right. inch older with all the specs. So, five thousand would be amazing, but hundred inches. So here's the caveat, though. The game that was playing was a console game, and it was an NBA game, a sports game. They typically look very good. They look mm -hmm. kind of realistic. But if I put anything there with real texture or 
um, you know, different HDR, it's going to have a hard sure. time. Right. So uh, the contrast, banding, right? Yeah. Uh, the contrast ratio the on a yeah. uniform and a basketball court and an orange ball or FIFA isn't that difficult. Green, my white sneakers, the end. You get into a more elaborate title, um, cyberpunk, something like that. It's just that's where the black level is so important. And so the, 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 the pixel response the, no, is instantaneous. No, no. You, you bring up that. Let's talk about the black level. If you don't know what black levels are supposed to look like, Right, because you oh, have there you go. You're always OLED, playing. You're always OLED monitor. <laughs> you have your OLED monitor. You have your multiple OLED TVs. So you're accustomed <laughs> to the true dynamic range from deep blacks of a specific game. You're like, like wait a minute, this is lifted. But a yeah. person's walking in from a Vizio, and they're like, wait. <laughs> every <laughs> single if i'm a busy old guy i'm like is it every time that he brings us up like that <laughs> if you've He's come from some man. crap like the a visio owner is my straw man for this every single time because if i say insignia i feel like i'm it's an easy shot right i, I gotta go with Vizio. uh so yeah you're coming from a five-year-old visio that was a great tv five years ago and they're like uh, the black levels on those weren't great but you go to a U76N or the U8K, it's like, oh, the back levels actually look a little bit better, right? Because it's all relative. Yeah. Now, like like we say, if you're coming from an OLED, you're going to have a hard time. You will see the differences. But look at how small that audience is. That audience does not move the needle anymore. The, no. no. Well, the and OLED when... crowd do no longer moves the needle. It is what Commandant <laughs> Quink is saying. They yeah. want the big size screen over the best picture quality. And this big size isn't the best, but isn't the worst, right? It's well, and then to, to command the clink, the, the, the great part about this is you, we, I did a video on sharp recently and when they split up, they finished up going from very high end to very affordable 70 inch, really bad TVs. Actually, you remember those in FOMO, but they're just best buy TVs at a certain point. And it kind of was like, Ugh, that thing looks terrible. Well, now we're getting to where you are having the UAK, the QM8. You're having these great large TVs, yeah. That are um, that are that are now qual. You're not having to make that compromise. Where a while ago, the largest, even the X92, a couple of years ago, the X90, they weren't that great. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was any way. It was kind of that thing where you're like, okay, I have to really comp. Now you can kind of get both. So, um, and, and anyway, so Z Black Rider, what's up, Z Black Rider? Come on, gamers. They actually can't see what's happening. It's a really good point. When you watch competitive gaming, Twitch, those guys, Dr. Disrespect, why does the image quality look so bad? Well, they're playing on very responsive monitors. Nothing is turned on. They're flying around. But I would argue when I'm playing a cinematic game, I need it to look as good as possible. But even playing COD, I play on an 83 inch with a 4090 and I do have my blacks lowered. I want things to look beautiful. So I do pay attention, but I understand completely what he's saying. What's up, Getty? Came in at the right time. TV scrapper. It looks, it looks like I lost my, <laughs> my Vizio sponsorship. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to let him go. Are you guys going to re up? Nope. All right. Oh, wait. James Campbell is my audience. Right now, I'm watching it on a first generation Vizio P series. And James, you have the unicorn. The P series is still working for you. Uh, one of the biggest complaints about the P series is that the, the power. It, it either doesn't turn on or it shuts off. Oh, mine broke during so, my review. You can go see yeah, my review. The hold Quantum on X to that P series yeah. until it falls apart. But then when James is going to upgrade, <clears> James, <throat> tell us, are you going to go larger, like 98 inch, 100 inch? Or are you going to go with an OLED? Because James is the people that the larger TV is going after, the former Vizio owner that we yeah. pull out of our hat every single time. And here he is stepping in, letting us know he's got a Vizio. I love well, it. Well, he is brave. He's like, hey, I'm proud. It's going to shut off while he's, I lost the power. Mine broke during the review. <laughs> the Quantum X. I was like, this thing is, oh, wait, hello? <laughs> that was it. I love it. And I think at the end of the, well, okay. So I, what I want to bring into the discussion is then the Vision Pro. Uh, because now I've got more time with it. Definitely the Vision Pro is not, ready for prime time in terms of image quality i'm not talking about the weight i mean let's just put all that aside we're talking just pure image quality in some of the scenes you can tell it feels like it's lower resolution so i think it's the source because in some scenes it's like 4k you see the 4k definitely we unless until we have more content it's just 
well, the content will be there eventually, but but the motion is what on the hardware side they need to improve. I think it needs to be at 120 hertz and then software adjusted accordingly so that all the images can flow using 120 hertz uh, frame rates because the Vision Pro, I think, maxes out 100 or something like that, 50 to 100 or something like that. And it, the level of stutter really is, I would not convert normal movies to Vision Pro because there's just too much stutter and I can't address it. I, I cannot adjust the stuttering. So those of you who hate stutter, I do not recommend the Vision Pro for cinema watching. Now, it's great for like Avatar because they have high frequency frame rate on Avatar. And in those scenes, it's very smooth, just like in the theaters, soap opera-like as the creator intended, and even Gemini Man, right? But things that were natively shot for cinema 24P looks terrible if you don't like stutter. And in this giant bright screen that covers your face, that stutter really is jarring. We're talking like five feet of stutter, right? Yeah. So it's just something that people have to keep in mind. Uh, so I, in my review, I'm going to list the things that they need to address for people to upgrade. Now, I'm going to hold on to it because who knows, software updates, this and that, more content. But the reality is that if you want to watch it for cinema immersion, get yourself a 100-inch TV instead. It's a lot cheaper. And you can adjust the motion. That's the key. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing, if you go back to the ladies, though, um, the hello, biggest ladies. selling, well, hello, late. Well, I've only seen Lee's in there, but the one um, reason that laser TVs and the ones with the credenzas, like the A wall, um, were actually very attractive for even wealthy people was the screen goes away. Where even somebody with a massive, beautiful house does not want a huge TV on their wall. Uh, TVs aren't attractive when they're off. Um, and they, they are, as you mentioned, interior design um, nightmare. So mm -hmm. I think we get to that 100 in size, especially for the proper viewing angle FOMO, you are going to be closer than most people realize you should be. I think that's where the ladies are going to say, we're not buying something that large. I think 75 is probably where a lot of them are going to want to, because they do look like monstrosities, no matter, like the UX and the QM8, as beautiful as they are, they're big, they're thick. And if you said they have to be heavy, they can't be 50 pounds. So. And back to our theme, ladies' night. The Vision Pro is also hated by the ladies. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I, those of you ladies lurking, maybe, I showed it off to some of my friends and, and so forth. And one of my friends is a female who's married. She's like, do not dare show this to my husband. We already have a hard time bringing him into the family. He, you know, he wants to play the video games, whatever. But everything is like so isolated, right? Already, watching TV together is one of the few times you get together as a couple or as a family. You give him the Vision Pro, I'll never see him again. And so I think yeah. the Vision Pro definitely not appreciated by the ladies. I think yeah. that's something you don't want to get because she wants to spend time with you, and the Vision Pro is for solo practitioners basically yeah, it's, you, like a, it's a, a gaming thing you won't alone, see him again right. it's a yep. gaming thing or you know it's thing she's not there you're on your own but the minute you put it on you almost don't want to take it off and that's very annoying to your other half and so the vision pro if you want something that leads to couples therapy go ahead and get the vision pro because it's it's not well, good it's, well it's funny if you're married long enough it's not that they want you to spend time with them they just want you to get up off your butt and go do something and you're like, what? What? <laughs> I'm watching a movie. Oh, man. <laughs> wait, wait. I need to address this, Commandant. So this is, what do interior designers know? They mount TVs above fireplaces. Uh, working with a lot of interior designers, doing a lot of interior design myself, uh, I'm more of a industrial designer, but I do interior design just because I love doing it for my friends and myself. The only reason people put above the fireplace, and this is a, they don't know where else to put it. And this is the consumer asking for it. Interior designers hate putting TVs above the fireplace, mostly because it throws off the entire design of the room. They would rather the TV, either the frame, go on a wall, become a picture, whatever it is. They like to fill empty spaces, negative spaces, as long as the TV can have that frame. So you would blame the interior designer for choosing the frame because then you have color on the frame that's rotating, whatever. But putting it in front of the fireplace actually 
takes away from the beauty of the fireplace, right? We work mm -hmm. very hard to put, you know, certain stones, certain texture. You throw the TV on there, it's like, wait, <laughs> you spent 50 grand on this fireplace and now you covered it with a TV? I, mm -hmm. I had to prevent my friend from putting on her fireplace, right? Because she spent so much money to, to get it on Venetian, uh, was it a Venetian stucco over the fireplace. Like you did all of that. I want to show off the color of your fireplace. You're going to throw a TV on top of it? You imagine no. though, having like the mason. He's like, I did the most beautiful work on the corners. He looks, goes over and it's a plastic piece of plastic on there. He's like, what the heck is this? <laughs> yeah, let's face it. Gotta drill the, the, the yeah, oh my God. And the brackets, oh, no. I don't care how oh. nice the, that's why the G3 is so cool. But no matter how nice the brackets are. You're, um, they never wait, look wait, wait, great. Wait, wait, wait. James wants to show that his video, is his Vizio is 10 years old and we're jinxing it. <laughs> so, so, so James, I think with look, my buddy of mine, and I'm going to do a video of it. He actually has a 20 something year old plasma Walmart kind of exclusive. So I think you made the cup by your TV is just too old and it's probably fine. They probably missed them being worse. But I think AJ in there said, say, uh, say Vizio three times and nothing will happen. Same as if you try to power it on. Messed up. Crypto uh, has a great comment. And so for those of you whose wife is a gamer, congratulations, gentlemen. Oh, That's yeah. hard to find. My wife is you. a gamer. So when I upgrade my TVs, I have to buy two. So she won't feel left out. And we have our own separate gaming setup. So unlike my suggestion, where I suggest you bundle your TV with an air fryer, get yourself <laughs> two gaming TVs. I mean, your wife is a gamer. And I think Classy's wife is a gamer too, but she just yeah. wants to make sure her quality of life is not affected because she's pretty good with the TVs that Classy chooses, right? Because for her, she is not happy when the settings change and she's ready to game on it. Oh yeah, especially Classy, when it's when it, when, when it's when Classy has right. it all accurate and she's like, I want to see blue on my hedgehog. I want it to be a natural hedgehog. It's like brown. <laughs> I made it look accurate. I, I calibrated. Stop calibrating our TVs. <laughs> Mario's oh. color's not even red anymore. No, this is a great Wild comment, guys. Brian. Brian Fomo, Sharp had major TV problems in the early 2000s. Now, I did not have a Sharp in the early 2000s, so I cannot yep. speak to that. But they did. banding, dead pixels, you think their new offerings will be problem free? That's a good question. Uh, I have my thoughts on that, but Brian, you had a, a pretty you probably had the most thorough hands-on with the sharp than anyone on youtube period yeah so i'll, I'll let so, you take so talking to sharp and robert spoke to the engineers from value electronics talked to the engineers it's really hard to chase it down to where they went from sharp to pioneer elite they bought that name they sold the name to hisense so it's kind of hard to keep track of where they're going to pull back but from what i understand they're back to the high end market um, and they, they're looking to whatever their SOC is theirs. I believe the panels are theirs. Everything is in house. So I'm pretty certain that that's what they can say about the quality. They're looking to make things high end and in house, but they're actually not that expensive. So I think they're looking to earn your trust. I don't know how they do that with such a limited release. They're going to have to actually, Robert has the XLED now and the FS1, which is last year's OLED. But I didn't film the OLED because I didn't think you guys would care about last year's OLED. So um, they sold very well. I thought it was great. It did not do well to shoot out, but I think that that was a defective panel. It just didn't. It's a uh, local dimming was not great. This is the XLED. But I was impressed with it. I thought it was very natural. It had like a Sony Panasonic look to it. So I think to your point, um, they're going to have to earn your trust back, but it's hard to, to do that just out of the gate. I would wait and see how it goes. But their, their, their mission is to be more consolidated versus my name is here, the panels are from here. What's your thoughts on that, FOMO? My most, so my biggest thought about Sharp this year is their move to Roku for their yeah. OLED TVs, right? Mm -hmm. um, that tells me that they are acknowledging the quality of life issues when you try to attempt your own operating system or yep. you use a slightly more complicated one like Google's OS. And I'm going to say Google is slightly more complicated. Among tech enthusiasts, you know, it's easy. Okay. But for most people, and, you know, we'll bring in the Valentine's Day theme, my parents, ladies who do not want to deal with settings, right? Roku, everything is there that you need, quick, fast, and OLED already delivers image quality. So you're 90% there that it's an OLED, right? 
Then you throw on the ease of use of Roku. I think that was a very good move by Sharp. Now, whether it allows them to sell more TVs is another matter, but they're not the only ones that are making a move to ease your operating systems. Panasonic this year, right? With their flagship, they moved to Fire TV. I honestly was shocked to hear that they chose Fire, but they did. I'm sure they have a good sweetheart deal with the advertising revenue split. So you got to pay your yeah. bills. And we know Panasonic is struggling because their volume is very low. They want to stay relevant. You need money to stay relevant. And so they're working with Amazon Fire TV operating system. Amazon will deliver ads, but at least Panasonic gets a cut of that. And you have Sony working with Google TV, but we've seen that working with multiple vendors, suppliers on your system. So Sony has their own image processor that has to play nice with the Google TV, that has to play nice with MediaTek. And you know they're struggling with Dolby Vision, let's say, right? And we know they're working on it. Uh, Sony has confirmed that they are working on Dolby Vision on the A95L. They know it's an issue. They are on it. They know that streaming is a challenge. They know all the details. It's just going to take some time. But that's my point is it's easy like LG WebOS. You have your own software. Everything is in-house. It's easy to troubleshoot. Your team knows what's wrong. It's just a matter of time to get it fixed. But when you have to lasso your your own team with Google and MediaTek, if MediaTek has any issues they need to resolve on their end, it becomes an issue. And so the cleaner your stack of suppliers are, the easier it is. And I like the sharp. It's like, you know what? Image quality is good enough. We're just going to go with Roku. What are your thoughts on Roku? You think that's a net positive for sharp or you think they should have won with their own thing? I think you're like you mentioned their own thing is too arduous. It's hard. I just yeah. don't love the cheapness look of Roku. I think Roku has always been that where it's you're welcome where it's always been their branding. It's just, or it's just a cheap look to me. I don't love that it's everywhere. Um, maybe so the cheap Roku remotes that came with their streaming, but that stuff's not important to me at all. To be honest, I very much, I'm an Apple TV guy, so it doesn't really bug me. I, I go with another source if I can, but I know a lot of people don't. Yeah. And, and book and praise. I, I have it. I'm going to have a review on it, hopefully, by the end of this week. What I'm trying to do is superimpose what I see over my 100-inch screen from seven and a half feet away so you guys can see the differences. But ultimately, it is only two pieces of content that demonstrates the full power of the Vision Pro. All the other stuff with the motion issues, you would enjoy it. Now, sports, high frame rate sports, that probably should be good, but I have to wait for that to come as far as truly taking advantage of the immersiveness of the Vision Pro. It'll come, just not anytime this month. <laughs> and hey, Money Cujo is here. Yo, yo, Money Cujo. I, I love that the regulars are trickling in. You guys are awesome. And don't forget to click like so that more of us can jump in and join in the conversation. 180 are watching. Click the likes, my friend. Most deaf. Okay. Nick said, asks, is the S90C at 83 inches worth it without, and I'm assuming you mean QD OLED, or should I go for the Q90C at 85 inch for almost half the price? I would say go with the Q90C at 85 inch for almost half the price. Uh, so this goes back to our, I think it's good enough discussion. Now, the 83 inch S90C should have a little bit better DSE in terms of dirty screen effect, but Nick, let us know. What are you watching? If it's mostly sports, go with the Q90C. Don't worry about it. If it's yep. man cave, critical movie watching, maybe you might consider the OLED. But what do you think, Brian? I mean, I for me, the S90 at 83, just I'd rather go with anything else, like an A80L or even a C3. To me, mm -hmm. you know, Samsung's best, best strength in the OLED department is their QD OLEDs. I don't trust their regular products, I guess, past that. I Only because I know QD a Samsung displays, that's why I'd go. But as far as upscaling, LG does it better, and so does Sony. So I would go back the other way. If you're not going to be with the QD OLED, I would not, unless it's much cheaper than those other TVs. I don't know what the 83 inch costs for the C3 FOMO, but I'd rather have a C3 than a Samsung S90. Yeah. I, I want to hit this comment. I think it's great. Hi, Lisa. Sci fi fact says, sci fi sci fact says, I think Samsung wanted to bankrupt LG rather than give us a great TV with their QD tech. So I think that backfired. Now, if this was their original intent, they can't and why themselves. I say it backfired is no one were, was able to sell OLED TVs last year in a volume that made it worth whatever strategy they used. Both 
companies, Samsung Electronics and LG TV, came in selling way less OLEDs than they had hoped in 2023. And this year, it's so bad that Samsung has already ordered millions of W OLED from LG. They're like, look, guys, yeah. we're on the same team at this point. At this point, unless we work together, OLED is dead. <coughs> No, forget yeah. QD OLED, forget mm -hmm. W OLED, forget MLA. It doesn't matter. So Samsung has ordered a whole bunch of non-MLA W OLED from LG to just help them lower their average cost of supply. And of course, Samsung Display is trying to improve their yields. It's better technology. It, everything is improved, but you guys don't care. You guys look at the price. You're like, for an extra two hundred dollars, give me that ninety-eight inch high sense. That's what Samsung Display and LG Display is dealing with right now. And so this may have been possibly the goal 18 months ago. Right now, they're on the same team. They need OLED TVs to stay relevant. Yeah. What do you think, Brian? Do you think they're still? It's just so funny. SB Digital says, the S89C is most definitely not junk. I did not say it was junk. <laughs> what is wrong with you guys? You, this is how the forums junk. are. Oh my God. He said it was a piece of crap. He's going to come over my house and blow it up. I did not say it was junk. I'd say I prefer the processing of this LG or Sony over it. <laughs> I didn't say it was junk. We're putting words in my mouth. I put my own words in my mouth. <laughs> what was your question? I got to get distracted. No, by no, that. No, the, the question is whether Samsung versus LG OLED. So Samsung OLED, QD yeah. OLED versus LG QD OLED, are they at each other's throats? My position is they're on the same team right now. Absolutely. They yeah. need I mean, to work together to push the OLED TV agenda if they want OLED TVs to stay relevant. It may not yeah. be if the Chinese have their agenda to convince you that you have 2,500, you have 3,000, don't buy an OLED, buy a very large mini LED. Yeah, uh, do you guys think that? But but Samsung's not making their own LED panels anymore. So I mean, is that where we think that do we still think that burn-in is a fear for people? Are people just jumping, or has we gone from sixty-five being a comfortable large size? Did we jump over seven? I'm asking you guys. Do you guys jump over seventy-five and then go into a hundred? Do you see like like for me? Oh, I, I wasn't coming at you. Even if you were talking smack, I still think it's funny. Um, but um, my point is, I was at 75 in 2016. So I was jumping. But for everybody, it's like, no, no. Big, remember how many videos? Big TVs are stupid. You would hear that until recently. Now everyone's like, I'm going 100. <laughs> so um, I think that's more than I think the OLED thing, especially FOMO, considering how cheap they are now. Mm -hmm. How are they making money? I mean, they were so expensive a few years ago. Now they're 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 so cheap. And I think you guys um are really wanting more for your buck now, and you're yeah. not really willing to spend 50, like fifty five inches for a two thousand a dollar TV, right, FOMO? People are the, saying no the thanks. A ninety five L. The A ninety five L is two thousand dollars for a fifty five inch TV. Yeah. Yeah. So I think so. I think somebody like Getty's like, dude, I I made money off my eighty my hundred inch TV. So I think a lot of them are saying. Whether I think that's too expensive is one thing, but I think a lot of you guys are saying, look, it's just not, the market's not demanding it. And I much get something, I much rather have something huge uh, and enjoy it. That, and by the way, something like Getty's TV is still gorgeous. UAK is awesome, but the money he paid for it, my phone costs more than that. It's yep. insane. I mean, it's really and, amazing. So, we, and we need to educate people as to why they don't have a regular. RGB layout. So the sci-fi facts is I'm so disappointed with Samsung's display away. Couldn't they do a regular pixel layout? And the reason is, it, you have to remember, it's a full blue backlight, all OLED. And in order to control the blue from leaking, they have to place the pixels in a way. Because remember, the blue goes straight through with a special filter. So the blue OLED is what you see. But then you have the red and green QD color converters. If they don't want that blue to bleed across the red and green they have to place it in a specific layout to minimize that blue bleed and that was their solution nothing is perfect it is a compromise but you still got your qd oled with red and green because blue qd does not exist in terms of a color converting layer they wanted to use the direct blue OLED. So that pixel is to keep the blue from, well, overwhelming the other two colors. It, not much of a choice there. From Now, if they might be able to adjust it a little bit like they did this year. They had slight adjustments to that tri 
tri layout, the triangle layout that they have, mm -hmm. but it has to stay something like a triangle layout in order to minimize that blue bleed. But that's yeah. fine. So you just, just so you understand, it's not like they're holding anything back. It's just physics. Well, we love the QD OLED, the fact that they were able to achieve 3,000 nets without pushing it harder. They just were smarter with it. I mean, I think it's yeah. amazing technology. But I think to yep. your to your point, they're not at 83. It's why I don't have one. And, and you know, it's a good question too, FOMO. I mean, I proved it. I think the A95L is phenomenal. I love the S95C and the G3. There's a reason why it's not behind me. They cat mm -hmm. at 77 inches. So if they were 83, the A80L wouldn't be here. But it is, for a lot of you guys are jumping even past that. I mean, you guys are going past the 83 to 80 to 100. It's amazing. And so Nick is giving us more clarity between 83 inch OLED S90C versus the QN90C. So having gaming in there, movies and sports. Okay, first of all, sports will look amazing on the QN90C in your man cave. End of story. So you don't have to worry about that. Movies, it depends. If you have a lot of black bars, you may notice the slightly raised black bars on the QN90C. Maybe it's not terrible, but OLED will be perfect. And the image or the color accuracy on OLED. Generally speaking, if it's QD OLED, it's pretty good out of the box. I don't know about the S89C 83-inch, but the A80L is pretty good out of the box. So the 83-inch A80L is about 4,000, just above 4,000, whereas the QN90C 85-inch is just above 2,000. So you're right. You're paying yeah. twice as much. So let me ask you that, Brian. Given Man Cave, and it's twice as much to go to an 8080L, is it worth the 2,000 to go from the QN90C I'm going to say no, but if you are a hardcore gamer like Brian, it may be worth 2000 Now, if you have 2000 to spend, it may be worth it. But if you're playing Nintendo Switch, PS5, ah, maybe not in terms of, ah, you know what's good enough. It's just getting the boys together and play and have fun. Because the QNDC well, would look good on it as well. Yeah, and where Nick's situation is also, the two inches larger is a big difference as well. You know, a lot of you guys think it's not a big difference. It is. I mean, we, we, I, we've, we've seen these TVs up close. It's going to be more cinematic. I just look, I think the S989 or 90 is probably great. If it's not a QD OLED, I just have a hard time getting behind it. I just, you know, it's it's if you can get a cheaper TV for larger, save the money, get yourself a nice Samsung soundbar that goes with it and just rock it. I would. Yeah, there you go. And the big TV craze off almost fall. He got on the train last year. I wouldn't have gotten the train if Getty didn't go buy it and say how awesome it was for twenty five hundred dollars. Like, wait a minute, Getty's right. I mean, if you and, guys and have hung out with the train. if you guys have hung out with us <laughs> long enough, man, FOMO was not into big TVs as much as like eight months ago. <laughs> he's like, nah. Now he's like, hey. <laughs> well, okay. When it was eight thousand, I'm like, come on. And I kept on oh, telling yeah. you guys the same thing. Wait till it drops to five. When the U8K dropped to three yeah. and the Getty yeah, got it for 2,500, guys, at that point, as long as you have a good panel, right, all that stuff, panel lottery always applies, that was a no-brainer. If you could fit a 100-inch into your house yeah. at 2,500, I mean, that's that's it. You're done. Yeah. And he loves it, right? And a lot of people who are getting the U76N, now they're, the deliveries uh, are complete. They've, they've texted me, DM'd me, and they love it. Uh, you know, a couple, oh, you know what? Panel lottery. Swap it out. Best Buy will swap it out. It doesn't yeah. work. doesn't matter because you got it Best Buy. Most of you did. They will just walk in. The team will they'll put it on. We'll take it out. And then we'll bring you back another TV and swap it out if it's available. If it's not available, then you're going to have a blank wall for a while. But at the end of the day, I think Best Buy wants to make it easy to get rid of your old TV and put in a new one. And when you're ready to replace that 100 inch in a few years, they'll do it again. So I think so that kind of solves that. So, Fomo, go to um, Sci-Fi's last comment. Okay. Uh, what time? Where'd it go? It was, uh, it just happened. It said something about it can't be, QD OLED can't be 612. 612. Oh, okay, okay. And I see you, Dylan. Thank you for the super chat. We'll get, grab you next. All right, let's see here. There we go. Brian, so QD OLED can't beat five inches that's how good it is it can't, it can't. You, <laughs> the, the, as good as the a95l i told you guys it cannot grow up it cannot go in the gym it cannot get you, bigger you need that extra 
if you need that size closer doesn't solve solve the problem no and anyone says hey just get closer to it put it in your lap i had a 55 inch tv in my lap when my basement was being redone and it didn't feel like a bigger tv it felt like i had a 55 inch closer to me but that whole thing of if you need a larger tv is my point if you need that size no better tv at a smaller size is going to fill that need it just is impossible they cannot get larger that's not my opinion that's fact they can't grow that's what i'm saying mm. if you need the size if the size doesn't matter to you get get a reference monitor and sit in front of it <laughs> spend 30k but as far as does the size matter if you need that size it's not going to get larger so dylan has such a great question up, dylan? because it, I have to unpack the true issue in decision making, which is what I love doing. So Dylan asks, what level of performance do you think is required to make people, regular people, right, buy a flagship OLED 77, 83 inch over a mid tier 98 inch LCD TV? What kind of stats would do it? So Dylan, you are focusing on image performance. What if I told you people <coughs> shopping and this, we'll put money aside for now. People are specifically shopping for a 100 inch TV, 98, 100, 110, right? Just that large size. That's what they want. They've heard about it. They've heard their neighbors have it. And they're going to put aside some money for that, but they want that size. So the issue now that the 77 to 83 inch flagship has is they're not 98 inches. So now you're asking that regular guy, hey, why don't you drop 12 inches like more <laughs> drop 18 inches and go better image quality he goes but i want 98 you see right and what do you say brian once your mindset is on a little bit larger you're always going to second guess but i could have had 98 inches we had two we, and reason, that, right and that's probably the biggest buyer we always joke about the difference between fear of missing out and buyer's remorse one of the largest is i love my tv i just wish i went larger and that does not go away Brighter, maybe if I went brighter, I wish I had a brighter one. You can get over it, but when it's size, you're just like, and, and especially since so many people for a long time, FOMO were 11 feet away from a 65 inch. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, Whoa. Um, but I would be very curious. I know these 100 inch TVs are selling out, but we're also in dreamland if you think the average person's buying them. And I talked to Rob from Sony. He's like, that is not, it, it looks like that is that they're moving in big numbers. They are not. They are not making that many of them which is why they're selling out. So the, yep. if we're talking about the regular guy is not walking into Costco and buying a hundred inch TV. I've been in there filming. They're like, I want some eggs. I want some bread. I'm getting my tires changed and I'll buy this 55 inch. So the average person is still buying that. But the enthusiast I think is splitting off into a group that just says, Hey, I think I'll, I'll spend my money better elsewhere. So we're still in a vacuum is what I'm saying. Yeah. The frame is still beat. There's no hundred inch frame is what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank God. And another thing, Dylan, is those who have had an OLED, they're going to stay with OLED. The OLED doesn't have to get better, honestly. Just don't get worse. So yeah. just get cheaper, right? So let's say you have a 65-inch OLED. You already move up to an 83-inch. You will move up when the 83-inch gets cheaper and looks at least as good, if not a little bit better, than your current 65-inch. When your 65-inch fails, that's when you'll get the 83. But if you're coming from a non-OLED you're going to see that 98 inch and you're going to think if I could only fit that 98 inch. So specs is not an issue. I believe, I think it's more of the desire to have a large 98 inch TV. And that means all it needs to get to 98 inches and match image quality, but at an affordable price, this is really difficult for the OLED TV makers right now. They cannot make a 97 inch at an affordable value. Mm -hmm. So that leaves them with trying to make the 77 inch better. And honestly, Brian, how much better can the S90C, the S95C, the A95L, 77 <sighs> inches, how much better can they be? I mean, if they address every complaint, for, let's, let's make this up, 5,000 nit OLED, let's just say, right? Next yeah. year, uh, we all pretty much agree 4,000 nit OLED from LG display will be a thing. I don't think it matters. I don't think the regular no. Joe even knows what a nit is, whether it's no. four or five or three. And I, and I know LG display is just pulling out straws at this point because, and they will hit the 4,000 nit OLED next year, which is great. Thank you. But that's for me and you, Brian. So yeah. a whopping maybe 10 of our viewers will be buying that LG G5 at 4,000 nits, but everyone yeah. else will look at the $5,000 price tag and go, you know, that U8Z, 
or whatever that ends up being is also 5,000, 110 inches. And that's the problem or 6,000, 110 inches, well, right? Well, I think it's worse than that. I think it's a 55 inch G or a 65 inch G4 versus an 85 inch where someone or somebody is in Costco and says, I like that QN 85 because that's always been the one that people grab up. They look at that and go, I think it's good enough. I think that's the real problem, but they're getting hit on all sides. FOMO is people that don't know about them have a hard time. And then people that do know now want size. But I know yeah. I've made this analogy before. It's almost like the price of cigarettes. I've never smoked, but at one point they were affordable, right? Now they're really expensive. <laughs> yes, think about this are. for a second, but think about this now. It's the other way now. Hold on. It's the other way now. <laughs> Where, I love that look. I'm like, eh. it's the other way now where OLEDs were so expensive five years ago. Now they need to make more money. The process of making them has not gone down, but the prices of them are a quarter and their market share is down. So as you've mentioned, FOMO, I can't even make my money back. You guys want them free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it's really hard for them. They can't make more of them. The process is still hard and the 97 inch is just not tangible the z series and the g series the power supply in the z series is massive i mean it is a big metal thing you can't install that yourself you Maybe. know what's free you know what's free brian the bravia cam if you get the a95l i think it comes with it right so the question is and i know ab i, I, I saw your question we ignored and I, and I'm it for a segue. Where, where am i supposed to find that <laughs> Is that supposed to tap me to on the shoulder? The you want me to make a video? AB, I love you. You think I'm going to do a dedicated video on the Bravia cam? People turn that thing off because they're afraid to be videos. <laughs> let's talk about that. Okay, so let, let's talk about my position on the Bravia cam. I understand what it's supposed to do, right? Hand gestures, maybe. Uh, room, Shameful. Environment, right? Light, <laughs> right? But the greatest fear, and, and I'm going to bring Lisa in because Lisa has... A TV, Two. A95K, that's capable of Bravia Cam. Yeah. I just updated my A95K and it said, hey, Bravia Cam is available for your TV now. If you buy it, we'll you know, stick it in there and we'll start watching you. And so for me... <laughs> I'll start watching you, hey, girl. Don't wear that. Don't wear that, girl. <laughs> let, let's be honest. We have no control over Bravia Cam. Uh, you believe that you've shut it off as long as it's connected to the TV hackers software limitations being what they are it could be streaming without you knowing unless you unplug it and as long as it's plugged you really don't know because we're going back to sony they're using google tv and we all know google security is a nightmare i mean google's easily one of the worst unsecure platforms out there there is no way i'm going to have a cam plugged into an operating system that's operated by Google because what does Google always say? Psst, who knew? I mean, it's always there. So we didn't know. It was unintentional. What'd you say? It was, you need right? some new socks. I got you. And, and I believe them. It is unintentional. That's the problem. They don't know that something is broken until there's a class action. And, and that's something that applies to Facebook, that applies to Apple and Google. It, it, is, it is intentionally not caring not intentionally doing something, but what I don't like is the third party actors, the hackers, whoever, right? They can so easily get into your cam. As long as you're connected to the internet, they will find it. And, and that's my issue. I mean, security cameras, right? For the longest time, no one knew that people were watching through all your various security cameras, whether it's Amazon's or Google, because they didn't close that loop. And then when they closed it, well, there are 10 other loops they don't know about. And so that's something. Anytime you have a video stream on the internet, you really have to be wary. And so the Bravia cam, if it could be done without your TV connected to the internet, maybe, but how much of that is AI processing requires a cloud connection to have neural processing work as well. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's well, shameful look, that we are living in this world where the cam cannot be yeah. trusted, but I, I can't. But when I, did, when I did the Z9K, I'll never forget, I unboxed it. I was one of the first people to show that TV. The minute I unboxed that camera, the comments went were all over me. Dude, I'm not plugging that thing in the back of my TV. <laughs> I'm like, hey, here's the camera. You can go back to that video. Watch me go, ah, this thing is great. It'll track you when you go into the bathroom, <laughs> when you're wiping your butt. So be like, hey, you need some new toilet paper. Oh, yep. awesome. You know, next time we <laughs> should have a three-hour video on the Bravia cam. Oh, my I, God. I, I got it's it. still sitting in the box. <laughs> you, want, you want it? I'll send it to you. <laughs> so the question is, Lisa, 
and, and as we know, the, the, the ladies are incredibly sensitive. Now, the guys, look at me, right? They, they'll walk around butt naked. They don't care. Like, they're hoping to get caught on Bravi camp. But the <laughs> ladies, right? They're a bit more sensitive, right? They, they, they don't want their privacy stricken. But the guys are like, please catch me. I, I want to be the Let next star on TikTok with my... With, with with whatever you can catch and so maybe that would stop people from doing it oh man all we got are guys walking around bravia cam right we have to find a way to make this stop and i think the only way is for the guys to turn on bravia cam and just just start walking around you know the less attractive you are the more i encourage you to use bravia cam it may just stop <laughs> you would lean on your bed like like <laughs> <It may be>. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously maybe uh let us know what is the use case about the Bravi cam that really does concern you. I mean, obviously you 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 are curious about it. Let me know what is that use case that I'm missing because all I'm seeing are just privacy and security issues with the cam. And I have you know wife, daughter, so forth. So to me, it's it's a big no no. But you know, AB, if you're a male, not an issue, right? You know, let me know what uh, what's happening in your world where the Bravi cam is a thing. I love that. Yeah, well, you're like shameful. You spent five bucks to call it shameful. It's like <laughs> son of a gun, another hey, stream. Taras. Another stream. Taras, Taras, what's up? Back. How are you, my Buddy. friend? Thanks for your thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro. The gotta have more I got a chance to try them. It sounded okay, but I gotta have more cowbells. <laughs> think, 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 That's think. awesome. Yeah, I have to say, I thought the audio quality on the Bravia, given its tiny little speakers, I was impressed. I, I thought. I think the audio was good enough for something that size, but yeah, they definitely need to fix the motions for sure. And wait, <laughs> you said the I Bravia camera is trash. <laughs> where, where is your TV, Ryan? Is your TV in your bathroom? <laughs> I cannot even read that. Oh, it's awesome. All right, and. Let's move on to oh here we go. Sony has moved their Bravia Core to OnlyFans. OnlyFans, oh my god! Right? <laughs> and Commandant Clink wants me to know. Speak for yourself. He doesn't want to be caught on Bravia Cam. You know, not everyone has a six pack Commandant, so I understand, right? Because you know those thumbnails where they just lift their shirt. But I, I guess those with a six pack would just be walking by the Bravia cam and just yeah. If I had it like that, I would by. always I'd be doing. If I was like a gymnast, I'd just be doing flips everywhere, walking to the, <laughs> the mail, <laughs> back handsprings. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, baby, let's do this. Hey, what's going on? I'm gonna do a flip. <laughs> oh, I love it. And oh, here we go. Uh, good one. Curious on the findings from Vincent's G4, I guess. Vincent referring to HDTV test, where he found dark scenes processing greatly improved. Okay. Now, G4 is greatly improving on the side. What does that tell you about the G3? Okay, so, so anytime a TV is greatly improved in one thing, it tells you do not buy the G3 from last year if this is important to you, and that's what I noticed. I thought that near black was just crushed to hell. Very difficult, but it's panel to panel. Some panels did not. Mine did. My G3, I still have it. Struggled with Dolby Vision crushed blacks as well as non-Dolby Vision crushed blacks. So if this is the case, the G4 addressed it, we will see in the shootout. We'll have the shootout, the G4 versus the A95L with the third generation QD OLED panel. So not to be left behind, the Sony will also be improved near black as well because yeah. I know Classy discovered a few issues near black where there were color shifts and banding. So both TVs will be improved. And I think technically speaking, I don't know if Sony will ever verify they're using a third gen panel, but I believe they will and they are this year. And so maybe technically they're both 2024 models, the A95L for the third gen panel versus the G4. Brian, do you still think that LG will win? Now that you know that Sony will be using a third gen QD OLED, same processor though, and why? Why do you think the G4 will beat the Sony? Because we see that it's improving, right? Vincent's already verified that dark scenes look better. Why? Is it the fourth, is it the three, is it 3,000 nits? Because Sony is now capable of 3,000 nits as well. I mean, well, if they unleash it, I mean, Sony has if also they unleashed it. I got yeah, you. Sony's yeah. still director's intent. They still want to keep things minimal. Um, I don't think they'll make that big separation and call it something else. I think they might find a way to let the A95 dolls almost completely sell out. They may hold back the third generation. Um, 
I just think the G4 has a clear path with the S95D and the S90D having the old, pro I think it's processing with the G4 that's going to separate it. And the fact that it's got superior gaming features over the A95L. I love the A95L, but it can't hang in that category at all, no matter what kind of game bar they put on. Um, 144 hertz, which is not a big deal, but if you are a PC gamer, you might enjoy that. I think LG will get the 144 hertz right FOMO versus Hisense and Samsung. You won't see dropouts. There's no one connect box. So I think it's a clear, but the problem is, will it be enough? It's only one TV. It's very expensive and it's going to be very high end. It will be also the only 83 inch. So that's where it will be everything. Interesting. I think you're right. I think not unleashing it would be an issue um in terms of keeping it competitive but now that we've spoken about it when we see sony we need to tell sony to unleash it and if sony says yes then what do you think now this is all hypothetical guys we don't know if they will unleash it but i will ask sony to unleash the a95l or whatever it ends up being if it's using a third gen panel because you know things tvs are improving in eight month clips now not even every 12 months. I mean, they're moving so fast. And yeah, but I, I love Giddy's comment and Terrace's. They were talking about the SNL uh, sketch yeah, with Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell versus Chad Smith. I did not know Will Ferrell is such a good drummer. I loved this episode. I'm like, wait. Oh, we're the guy from Hot, Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yes, Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're, they're like twins. It's just like, well, I know. And they both drum. I'm like, Will Ferrell's pretty talented. And he, of <laughs> course, also a USC grad. But yes, that was an excellent episode one of my favorites as well uh, the cowbell love it love it okay so and and now we need to grip a uh, grill rob bren on the bravia cam in your next interview yeah Actually, yeah he'll be like it up brian you spoken to rob bren at least five times and each time we're talking hours off air and on air in any of those times did either of you ever mention the Bravia cam? Oh, yeah. Whole time. That's all we talk yeah. about. <laughs> That's all we discuss. Or, the Bravia or did Rob cam. ever try to convince you that the Bravia cam needs to be plugged in? I mean, Robert was the one who was talking about the Rob, Bravia cam following you around, but that's when the Zoom calls were getting really big during the, you know, during the, the shutdown. Uh -huh. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm like, why do I want this? He's like, oh, because we can follow you around the room. I'm like, why would I want this? <laughs> <laughs> so it so. can follow you <laughs> around in your room. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, so you so if you're doing a, a work thing, I'm like, who's following you around? <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, I love it. And and AB, thank you for that. That was a great excuse for humor. I, I'm just still imagining just people starting to do party tricks in front of the Bravia cam, hoping oh my god, yeah. like maybe even posting their IP online. Hey, just go be a YouTuber. Am I live? Am I live in China? We're here. Like, Hello. The, the yeah, poor, my star Mongolians getting a force feed of Bravia cam. Like, am I the He's new David people. Hasselhoff in China? Be a star. Absolutely. Hey, Yeti, thank you for the super chat. Watching the Super Bowl. Oh, yes. So this takes us back to what we we're talking about. The game sucked, team. though. Oh. If if you watch the Super Bowl on a 100-inch TV, whether it's the U8K or the U76N or even this, the TCL 98-inch S5, right? They had a 98-inch last year as well. Do you guys enjoy it? Like all of you who may have had the 90H 100 inch, were you thinking image quality? Were you thinking all oh, the blacks or issues, the issues of the black, issues with motion, issues with processing? Or did you find the TV was like just wow, this is the best Super Bowl experience or football watching experience because it's so big? And I'm thinking that I know you and I, well, actually, Brian, let me ask you. So you saw the game, I saw the game. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when I saw the game, the first thing I thought was, wait. Is Usher wearing my white gloves? So that's all I could think about then after that. I was like, ah, oh, Usher, really? Yeah, you, see, besides, you actually, Usher you actually text me. My gloves. I know. I took. Hey, you see that? Usher's wearing my gloves, and no shout out. Really? No, no. He's like, yeah, it was roller skating all over the place. What TV did you watch your Super Bowl on? And was it better for it? I watched it that's on the A eighty J. Um, at home, so how, how 70, how, how, seventy-seven how inch. 77 inch so that was the uh 2019 a80j yep. and mm -hmm. what are your thoughts it's perfect bright enough i mean i yeah i never have an issue with the, the a80 series not being bright enough i mean so i i thought it was great the tv still has great upscaling it was fine the game's terrible the game was awful but uh otherwise 
Picture quality seemed good. And well, speaking of Super Bowl, Matthew missed the Super Bowl sale on the X90L. When's the next time to buy? If it's an 85 inch X90L, definitely catch it when Sony launches their 2024 models. So this, you know, launch is coming up. We know anytime now, right? This month, next month, the month after. The minute it is announced, That's all the retailers will drop the price on the 85 inch for sure. The 85 inch is the first to go. So if you are looking to get the 85 inch X90L, wait for that because that'll be gone by June. Yeah. But if it's 55 or 65, Prime Day will get you your best deal. So wait for Prime Day for the 55 and 65, but the 85 and maybe even the 75 likely will be gone before June. So sometime between whenever Sony launches their 2024 models and June, that would be a good time. Like the minute you see a discount on Best Buy or your favorite retailer, I'd say pull the trigger because you risk just losing out on it altogether and then just getting the X90M or whatever ends up being this year. Yeah, and the challenge is with Sony is they're really exploring releasing things later in the year. It worked out well for them last year. Mm -hmm. So um, they might spoon feed us in terms of when things will come out. Yeah. You know, actually, let's talk about that, guys. Uh, those of you who are Sony fans, Lisa, I know you're a Sony fan. I, I am. I consider myself <laughs> a Sony fan as well. And what do you think of Sony releasing later and later in the year strategically? I'm not saying because of supply chain issues, right? That's out of their control, mm -hmm. but by happenstance last year, they ended up releasing later than they had expected and it worked out really well for them. And then this year they're like, wait a minute, it worked out really well. Why do, why are we beating ourselves up releasing right during CES? Mm -hmm. Why don't we push it even later? And it feels like not a peep yet. Maybe it's strategically, effective to launch in may june well, yeah well, like spring. why why do it early spring wouldn't they have a better run up for sales I, i'm just thinking aloud here as consumers yourself Ron, what do you think yeah so that's going to be an, another conversation that we need to have is that those of you that have a need to buy I, that means there literally is no you don't have a tv anymore it's hard because, right, I, th I think to now FOMO is very hard after CES, but what I think is really hard is when these TVs trickle out and you want to make a purchase, but you don't know what's coming yet. So with players like TCL and Hisense getting better, you still want to wait for the comparisons. You still want to wait for the reviews. If you're an LG fan or whatever, it's easier. Sony, mm -hmm. um, on purpose, and I don't think everybody was a fan of it, even from Sony, skipped CES for the second year in a row. Um, it's not just that it's too expensive, it's stressful <coughs> and you're sharing the limelight with all the media is running mm -hmm. around. You're getting less of their mm -hmm. attention. Um, forget about just us as influencers, but they realize that you have a clear end of year FOMO, not, fo not just fiscal, but you're saying, get everything ready. And then we start the season. How about they control it? And by having their TVs kind of look what they did it this year too, with the, with the prototype. Last year was the A95L that had to really hang back. Now the prototype, no one even knows what it is, so you all want to wait. So they're making you wait, and their TVs are looming above everything else. And that worked last year. Um, does it hurt sales? It hurts the people that have to buy at the moment, but I think they think of it this way. If I have to buy right now, I'm looking at last year's Sony anyway. Yeah. So I think they love having their own uh, stage set, and they want to be able to do it on their own. They want to have their whole own event, and then mm -hmm. that way they can cut, they can control which media is there versus, hey, be quick. I have to run to the next booth, which is how we do it, actually. Now, what about the timing? So I, you and I agree that they need to have their own event, right? Very much what Sony and Xbox is doing. They have their own launch event now. Yeah, They're no not going to share uh, the launch at CES E3. Yeah, no more right, E3. The whole E3 thing is dead. Yep. Um, other than game launches at E3, but the hardware launches they want to uh, nvidia their own hardware launch now yep. amd has their own hardware launch uh but what about the timing of the sony tv launch what do well, you the, think the, of them launching in may or june now well that bothered a lot of you guys last year because you thought that you know they're not playing by the rules but in reality there isn't a tv year schedule i mean tcl and hisense don't play by that at all they don't say it's like a game where they say hey look it's coming out in may they tell us the things that we've heard very early in the year is we're looking at this maybe keep this open and it's very vague it's like a three-month window 
last year i think it was early march they released the lineup um i think this year it might be later mm -hmm. I mean, early spring so um and i think they do subscribe to this fomo it'll be here when it's done and ready versus put something out there that's terrible and let's be realistic i mean lg has one tv they're really firing off G4. Uh, Sam's G4. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, God. yeah, the Q Neds will be great, but I think they know that let LG and Samsung fight each other for that spot. As far as the LED market, they're confident. Um, they're just being very, they're very boutique that way, aren't they, FOMO? They know they'll sell who, to who they sell with. Um, maybe that's part of it. So this takes me to Seek's question. Excellent. I feel like I'm on camera with an interviewer. So did it work out for Sony? So, you know, launching so late, having these late releases, did it work out for Sony? How did their sales do? We don't have inside scoop on their sales numbers as far as TV sales and whatnot, but I'll tell Public you company. this, their exposure in terms of discussion on YouTube, they got their own space without having to fight for a space with Samsung and LG. So when Samsung and LG launched <coughs> their G3 and S95C, and to a certain degree with S90C, right? Around March, right? March, April, there was a lot of chatter. Samsung, LG, LG, Samsung. But you know what was always in the background? Wait, the Death what Star. about? That yeah, A95L. Let's just wait. Let's just wait for the A95L. It's not oh, complete, that convers That conversation right? was happening during our streams yes so we were the first ones to show that those two go together we had 18 hours and i'm telling you every five comments were like wait till sony comes out and it put everybody on pause right i mean it was really looming the whole year yep and then when it launched that's all we talked about yeah lg g3 and s95c were all discounted i mean great value but they didn't want to buy it they wanted to see how the a95l did yeah. it definitely affected the sales of the other two because now yes. like, okay, let's wait until to see how long before the A95L drops in price and it didn't. <laughs> so, so they ended up black Friday again, the S90C and I yeah. ultimately chose the S90C price aside. I felt the S90C was so close to the Sony, yep. just get the S90C. And at the end of the year, the S90C to me ended up being the winner in terms of image quality based on value, gaming, everything. And it was so close to A95L, but the A95L was able to get media attention when the other two tvs were all about sales now right it was yeah the, the, mm -hmm. if you want to watch the reviews you have to watch three month old reviews whereas yep. the sony reviews were fresh the shootout <laughs> so for exposure <laughs> it worked out very well for sony and well, i and, thought yeah. go ahead well and we wow. play a big part in that yes. all of us you guys in the community mm -hmm. um yeah yeah you, you know, guys drive the narrative you guys don't yeah. even ask about the sony we don't so, talk about it because you guys don't so, care and with these discussions that we bring different than a lot of other product reviewers, um, what's up, Majid? Is that we keep the conversation moving and we keep it on a certain character all year long. So the A95L was brought up before. So a person that reviews TVs, they open them, they do an unboxing, they give you a 10 out of 10, whatever it is, and then they pack it up and send it never to be talked to again. And that review stands on its own. We don't do that. We talk about the TVs all year um and maybe those tvs get three years or two years of a conversation so we're actually doing a lot of these companies work for them a lot of people know that the xr clear is a thing because of us and because of you mm -hmm. guys they yep. know mini led versus full array versus direct lit they know dolby vision versus hdr 10 plus they know it because we are driving that that's not something they talk about in their literature that much so i think they're they're all realizing that we're talking about it all year long more so than consumer reports or even digital trends. We keep the conversation moving every week, every video. Mm -hmm. um, we discuss these TVs over and over. And I think that is what they're using too, is you know, it's free hype. And we're also looking for something fresh to talk about because I know Absolutely. Brian and I beat it to death. We beat the G3 and S95C comparisons to death by June. 100 hours. By June. Both you and I are like, we're yeah. done. I cannot, I mean, there's nothing left to talk about other than no. How does it compare to the A95L, which was well, and released yet? Well, well, to your po point, I know FOMO, you did the comparisons back with the A95L. Um, I was in the electronics filming. I had G3s all over me. I did not want to look at them again. I wanted to mm -hmm. film what else was coming out. Um, so mm -hmm. it's it's interesting that, but I think to your point, they realize, okay, let these guys fight it out. 
um, and they can sell at a higher price because it is a, a more premium product per se. And that's where they're having their issue. A lot of people don't want to pay that extra mm -hmm. price, that Sony tax, which is a real thing. So and to your second half of your question, you know, did they sell TVs? I believe they did because that's why they're doing it again this year. And if they're and they're, they're investing more out. marketing, and, and they're yes. and they're they're doing more. Well, and I'll say this. When people say that this company's struggling over another one, I don't see LG doing a lot in terms of their um, their show. CES they did, but they had a little small thing here. And these companies are doing massive events. TCL, Hisense are doing big events. I don't know if LG's doing that. I know things are really tight there with LG Display and electronics. Sony's doing big events. They are putting the money back into marketing. They would not be doing that if they weren't selling anything. You know, just it's not a glamour thing for them, and all always yep, agreed. And thank you for your patience, mm -hmm. Dylan. Another super chat. Do you think that affordable, affordable micro LED at ninety-five to one hundred inches will happen before they are able to get the OLED ninety inch below ten thousand? Well, that's a good no. question. Good question, and the answer is no. I had a conversation with my friend at DSCC, the Display Supply Chain Consultants, right? They are very attuned to where the technology is in terms of production, micro LED specifically. They're always tracking, are they there yet? Meaning, how close are we to a micro LED under 25,000? Forget 10,000. Under 25,000 will move the needle for many rich people. Yeah. I mean, 100,000, eh, that's a bit too much. But... Yeah. Uh, his conclusion after looking at where everything is in terms of manufacturing and yields, we're still 10 years off. Uh, was it mid 30s? So 2035. At 2035, maybe we'll see a forget 98 inch, 75 inch, 65 inch, 85 inch, maybe at the $10,000 mark, adjusted for inflation. Right? So we're talking 10,000 today dollars. Yeah. Um, that's 10 years away, guys. So don't even think micro LED on a TV. Think micro LED AR glasses and, and similar yeah. on a watch, right? We'll see yeah. the micro LED on a yeah. Apple Ultra 4 watch before we'll see it on a TV. So let's throw that out. The answer is no. Now, the OLED 98 inch below 10,000, OLED 97 inch, I assume, they're already producing it at 25,000. It's just they don't produce G2. enough of them. Yes, the G2. If they produced more of them to meet demand, it would go down, but their volume constrained because people are not buying OLED. It's just too expensive. Yeah. It's like a chicken and an egg. If people don't <laughs> ask for it, they're not going to make it because if they make too yeah. much, they're going to suffer another year of losses. <laughs> I really feel bad for the 98-inch OLED as far as its future product roadmap. I would love to have one. But of course. at the rate, the 110-inch, Mini LEDs are dropping in price. OLED, I don't know how they're going to cover that gap. That you can't close that gap when. No. And I'm going to say, let's say three years from now, the 110 inch is like five thousand dollars, right? Forget whatever it costs this year. In three years, it's five thousand dollars. There is no way an 98 inch OLED is going to be under ten thousand in three years, and that may be enough to put the nail in the coffin of a 98 inch OLED because the consumer demand, consumers <clears> like. How much is it? But this mini LED for one ten inch yeah. is only five thousand dollars. Well, and now that now that for a little while there, the OLEDs were catching up to LED brightness. Mm -hmm. Look at the X ninety five K, the or the X ninety five L was coming down in brightness to meet OLEDs, right? And I compared them. The A ninety five L looked brighter in some scenes. Now that they're going four thousand, five thousand, ten thousand nits, the brightness comes back into the conversation the way it did against the C seven. The OLEDs were dull, right? From where they were dim and they were beautiful, but they were dim and they were expensive. Well, that's mm -hmm. going to be how they are now. They're going to be not as bright and expensive mm -hmm. and smaller. And I well, think yeah. from what yeah. did they well, missed the, the MLA, right? By the time the 97 inch releases, just going to say that, yeah, you'd have to have MLA on it. Otherwise, no one will buy it. So I think that QD OLED missed an opportunity last year, not having an 83 inch QD OLED and an MLA last year, because this year, to your point, 83 is just not a sexy size. Because if you remember, 83 was bigger than 75, bigger than 77, but 85 was too big, and the LEDs were so expensive at 85. Now they're cheap at 85. So I think they missed their opportunity to really compound that or make a big deal of it. You know, the best example, and I'm sure all of you would be able to relate since many of you are males, even though it's a Valentine's Day theme, the Tesla 
reset expectation of zero to 60 among cars. Suddenly, mm -hmm. you can buy a $40,000 Tesla Model 3 and you're four point, you know, zero to 60 in 4.0 seconds. It's like, so unless it's 4.0 for under 40 grand, what's the big deal about zero to 60? Zero to 60 is so commonplace at 4.0 seconds that it's impossible for supercars to separate themselves. And so like an OLED TV, 98 inches are so affordable. Like if it's not 98 inches, I'm not even going to look at it because I know a lot of car manufacturers are like, people are complaining if it's not zero to 60 in four seconds or four and a half seconds, I'm not going to look at it. Like when was that even a thing? Like yeah, within two years, suddenly everyone's expecting zero to 60 in under five seconds. And yeah. it's easy to get with an EV and they expect the same of their internal combustion engines. Yep. And so here we are with a 98 inch where it's not 98 inches. Psst, I'm going to walk. Right. And, and to other question previously, which is, you know, mid tier TV and 98 inches or really good 83 inch. That's that's the new zero to 60 is 98 inches, what people want. And they'll take a really good all point. Along. It's a really it's a really good point, because to your point, it was, are you crazy to, hey, I need more of it. It was pretty fast, especially you guys in the comments. I'm telling you, we've been doing this for a long time now, and this would 75 was too big. I'm telling you, there were so many videos about TV I, being stupid. I, I thought 75 was too big. I skipped 85. I'm already in 98. I'm right to, I'm there's no 90. I'm right to 100. Let's do 1,000. <laughs> but, you know, okay, when it's $2,000, just like the Tesla, when a $40,000 car, right, 45000 after tax incentive or whatever, gets you 0 to 60 in hypercar <laughs> speed that was over 100000 just a few years ago, it becomes commonplace. You expect it in all cars under $50,000 or under $40,000. So yeah. we're there with, I mean, literally overnight. Last year was the introduction of the UAK. And then suddenly this year, oh, U76M, $2,000. And I'm like, what? How? And it yeah. sold out. People saw value, gone, right? Gone yeah. in a well, week. And, well, and think about this. We covered those TVs, the UAK, so thoroughly. That by the time that TV came out, same with the X90, you're like, you know what? I've seen a million reviews on that. I think I want that. Yeah. So where if that was just a reviewed TV, they'd be like, eh, I don't know what that is. We we put that in your head as far as that TV being good. And it's, you guys well, had it's enough sitting, research. It's sitting in everyone's head now. That yeah, I still have thing. mine. Mm -hmm. Patrick, thank you for that up, super Patrick? chat. I think this is the first time we got one from CZK. Is that Czechoslovakia? I don't know. Czech, Czech Republic? Hi, FOMO Brian. What would be your advice? 65 or 75, 77, a maximum budget, $1,500 with good audio. Oh, my friend, the good audio is what kills me. Currently 10 year old. Oh, great. He's coming from a 10 year old Samsung. I like I love these, that. Right. There's yeah, so much. These are easy. Eight and a half feet distance. So already I'm thinking the larger end of the size, 70% mm -hmm. streaming. Excellent. Right. The It's easy image quality to get right. 30% gaming. X90L, S90C, U7K, U8K. I, I got to go with the X90L so you can get the larger size. That's a value because of the 70% streaming. Now, even though it's only 30% gaming, if it's important to you, the S90C. But if it's 1500 max, X90L. I mean, you're getting a 75-inch X90L for 1500 right now. That's a good, right? yeah, that's a good price. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Now, why not the U7K, U8K? So... The X90L, in my opinion, is the equivalent of the U8K more often than not. The image quality are very close, but I prefer the motion, the settings, the image quality out of the box. You don't need to calibrate it. And it, it just looks so good. U8K is slightly better in, in some movies. Saturation, just, yeah. Right. And you're just streaming and gaming. You're not putting in the highest quality Cloud Escape 4K Blu-ray. Uh, you'll love the X90L, 75 inches. And it's $1,500. And you're coming for a 40 inch Samsung. So you yeah, win it's going to so be dream. Levels. It's going to be dreamland no matter what you do, my friend. But I would say that's a good call. Now, if the U76N is available where you're at and it drops to 1500, I may have to reconsider. Eight and a half feet away from a 100 inch TV. And I know this 100 inch TV is better than your 40 inch Samsung. I'm just throwing it out there, Brian. 60 inch just, jump. <laughs> I thought you were going to store it and get a new TV. I did. There's going to be nine guys that are going to go put it in. 
<laughs> my wife left me <laughs> exactly it's just me all the furniture is gone put it hey if it's big enough you put it right on the floor you wouldn't even need to worry about it thank you for your patience redmond for that super chat i watched the game at my brother's who has the g3 oh my sports tv of 2023 i preferred my a95k because the processing went on cable good point use case though the g3 colors popped better and we said that sports the g3 is going to pop more the a95k slightly dimmer better skin tones and standard even in vivid it has better and more natural skin tones processing so if you need that brightness across the room the g3 nothing comes close it matches media led but brian <laughs> Let me ask you, how important to you is that brightness that the G3 is so good at for sports? Like, would, would that even determine your decision or you would you go with the no. A95L, A95K regardless? Unless you're a big, unless you're a big hockey guy where mm -hmm. you need that white to push, I wouldn't. Because, again, I watched it on the A80L. I was completely happy with it. Or, I'm sorry, the A80J. Um, A80L behind me is not the brightest OLED. I'm completely happy with it. Um, for me, it has to be useful brightness but I wouldn't chase it for that reason for sports. I would chase it for gaming or HDR impact, not lack of HDR and Super Bowl. You know, to me, that's a once in a, a once a week watch. Yeah. Right. So, and to me, no matter how good the Super Bowl looks, it'll never look as good as some streaming and some, some games. So I wouldn't choose it for that, but I, I would chase the G3 or that brightness for gaming and, and movies, not sports, unless I'm watching hockey. Agreed. JD Ray, this is a question that's a classic question. I miss these questions. Can you help me decide between the OLED C3 versus the Sony A80L 65 inches? I cannot make up my mind. So, JD Ray, what is your use case? Are you what kind of source? But I'll tell you this maybe I should just short circuit. No matter what your use case is, more often than not, I will suggest the A80L because of XR Clear. Brightness is a wash. They're both so similar. It's not even worth talking about. Yeah. Forget the measurements that these reviewers are using on patterns. They're very similar. That it's not going to determine. What will determine is XR clear on the AADL or gaming compatibility because you want four HDMI 2.1 points with yeah. Dolby Vision gaming or whatever the special yeah. gaming features on the C3. So, Brian. What it's real, well, yeah. It's, to me, it's really that simple. The AADL is the better all around cine well it's really their signature it's their better all around cinematic tv watching tv it really is that kind of TV. everyday tv mm -hmm. every day in the gaming i've done a lot of gaming on it it's good enough if you oh like, yeah yeah i mean if jd yeah. ray doesn't know you have that tv behind yeah. you is yeah the ADL. ADL. yeah i mean i've game i did a, my last gaming video you can check it out um but i will say even with the aadl i'm i love going back to my c1 because I love the game bar. I love to be able to crush the blacks if I want to. I love the different presets. Um, I love HGIG when it's when it's supported. HGIG is a game changer. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, where gradation preferred and brightness preferred don't always move the needle much. There's mm -hmm. more flexibility with LG, even though LG's gaming supposedly took a step back last year. I think it's that simple. If you're a movie guy and you want that better experience, AADL. If you're a movie guy that likes gaming more, C3. It's really that simple for me. Anyway. Now, I will go to bat for the C3, not so much directly the C3, but just LG, electronics, TVs in general. Their web OS is a mature OS. The yep. AADL is using Google TV. I always feel that there's not enough memory, so it's laggy. I mean, it's my always A95K laggy. is very laggy. Yep. So is my, um, so, so is yeah. all of mine. So if you hate lag, C3 is slightly better. Uh, now, you got to enjoy the finger pointing remote but the c3 is not terrible by all means it's a good no. tv it's just what are what is your preference and web os is, yeah. is better on the c3 than the google tv on the sony but yeah, we have if, someone... if you're if you're a serious right. game if you're a serious gamer i'm telling you the lg just is such a more refined experience and mm -hmm. hgig when it's supported is looks brighter and look it's nice so i would go for it for a gamer if you're a gamer so that's what's always yeah. our cop out but it's the real answer but on the other side of it terrace who owns a sony he wants to let you know the moment you have a support issue and you have to contact Sony, they will jump through hoops for you and you'll understand why there's a Sony tax. Excellent point, Brian. You work very often directly with Sony, the team there, the support there, and they take great pride in that. That is 
the reason why the Sony costs money. But I will always yeah. also say that LG is a little bit more expensive for a similar reason. I think LG yep. support is actually pretty good as well. Yep. Uh, so if you're considering based on support, this is a good point. Now, I've been lucky my Sony TVs have not <laughs> failed uh, in the mm -hmm. midst of or after warranty or before warranty. But Sony does want to impress upon you that it's a enthusiast brand. So you're paying a little extra for that. But then LG G series, G3, G4, G2 has a five year panel warranty. So there's something to be said about them standing behind their flagship TVs at least. But and, Brian, and have that, you ever had to have a support issue with Sony that you can share? Um, I have actually um, years ago when they were great. Um, Samsung is awful. But they're massive, <laughs> I and I and I and I will agree with that. But I've gone at Samsung with a twelve thousand dollar TV, and it made no difference. I mean, it made no difference. KS ninety eight hundred seventy. I paid ten for it. It made no difference. That I was like, hey, I have the best TV you've ever made. They're like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> All they did was come out and tell me they couldn't fix it because they couldn't replace it because it was too expensive. Um, I will say that Hisense and TCL are still lagging in this area. Where I think mm -hmm. pretty certain if it breaks, you're stuck with it, is what I've heard. Um, we've brought mm -hmm. it up to them, um, but we're talking to mostly marketing people at that at that point, right, Foma? We're not talking to the actual manufacturers in some ways. Yeah. Sony yeah. does pay attention. I mean, they're all over this A95L Dolby Vision thing. I don't know, FOMO, did you discuss that with them yet? Or you've talked about that? Uh, in your not next... yet. I'm, I'll put that in my FOMO show. Okay, so I'll but wait for that to come out. It, yeah, we mentioned it on the stream, though. I mean, I did say, because yeah. you, know, you guys catch the stream, we're going to give you tidbits yeah. of information that are often our dedicated yeah. video but it's so they they fine, they right? pay attention but more more i think sony why you see like rob on my channel is they really do want to get your feedback directly from you and mm -hmm. so does samsung and so does these other companies are starting to look at us as that conduit versus forums where they can't see the interaction they're just getting people typing up what they hate they're actually getting real use cases from you guys that are real owners and they can prove it Agreed. Nice, Agreed. Where's your bar? Let's go. Oh, you're, I you're, know, Taurus. Where's your bar? Is it in Norway? I mean, I'm looking at the color of your avatar, and it keeps on telling me it's in Norway somewhere or Sweden. Taurus, thank you for another super chat. I own a bar, so ordered a 100 inch U8K today for Damn. three thousand dollars from Amazon. I guess it's available on Amazon, folks. Hopefully, a drunk won't fall into it. <laughs> Dude, place it high. Why well, looks so lifelike? <laughs> <laughs> they think it's going to be a projector. Working? Like these projectors are really, they're like almost there. Smack. We'll walk right into it, right? Just don't throw, don't slide like the Western slide the picture down the bar, have it crash into the TV. That's but awesome. I, I think, uh, let us know how your bar audience enjoys it. Like, did it make a difference? Are people coming to your bar because of this 100 inch TV? How does it look for sports? I cannot wait to hear your feedback. So that's awesome, Taurus. And Redman, thank you for the super chat. <clears throat> this is something that is Brian's expectation. Will the G4 match XR Clear this year? No, not match. Brian thinks it may even beat it. Unless Sony does something with the A95L and the <clears throat> third generation QD OLED, this is the year for the G4, right, Brian? I believe so. I mean, I, again, it also shows me in a way the way Samsung is doing it. They're kind of limiting that processor to a few models. Uh, I think the M series is going to have it too, FOMO. The wireless one going to have the processor, mm -hmm. I think. But they're leaving it off the QNED. They're leaving it off. So to me, they're trying to really separate the way Samsung with AK, we have this. And I don't think it's a way of them testing it. I think they want to really show this is the premium model. Um, yeah. I think their processing is going to be great. I think in having this copyright thing off where the copywritten material wasn't able to oh, use the AI. For right. streaming. Now they use AI. That's going to be a big thing. This is a lot of, a lot of speculation on our part. LG has had a good record of processing, and for them to focus so much on processing at CES, I'm pretty excited. I think the hype will be delivered. I, I think so. And well, to your point, though, it's the, it's the whole one-trick pony thing, though, is even if it does win, it's still one soldier going against an army of TVs, and it's just hard. If it was their low, if it was the C series, I would say, mm -hmm. you know, MLA on the C, better processor on the C, much brighter. On the G, I think they would have had a better chance, but you're still back to a one trick pony. And it's yeah. going to be hard because, and last year, FOMO, the G3 came out first, mm -hmm. which is hard.
So, yeah. what's up, Paulie? My boy Paulie in the house. And JD Ray just went to follow up when he asked about the C3 versus AADL. He only plays the PS5 occasionally. AADL. I think we're done right there. <laughs> You'll be happy with the AADL. Not a hardcore game. Yeah. You're not going to appreciate all the extras that the C3 has. Yeah. And the PS5 AADL will play nice. You should be good. And they play they play much nicer together now. They're, they have more of a, a synergy than they used to. So, yeah. And, and this is happy. great because SG is a current Hisense UH owner. Purchased a UH because the review of it, which was like way back when, a couple of years ago. So you started, baby. He likes it. And now U76N, so Hisense is creating a following. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, let, let me know how long it lasts. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoy it. I think you're, our long, you're, you're, you're our longevity good. test, by the way. You are, SG. <laughs> Who knows? SG's got it. Hit him up. This is, a, uh, would say, an entry-level 100-inch. It doesn't have mini LED, and it's got some dimming zones, right? I mean, dimming zones... I think entry levels got to have dimming zones now. And so SG is a great kind of like a canary in a coal mine. If he loves it and he has something to compare it to the U8H, which was a phenomenal TV, one of yep. my favorite TVs. Yeah, great blacks. Uh, that that says a lot. And he loves it. So And the U8H and went against the U8H right. went against everything. When you had it against the G3, you oh, had yeah. it against the Q95C. Yeah, oh, that your was Buffalo was nowhere near me, but that's no, nowhere, nowhere near Norway. <laughs> No, he's like, I'm in Buffalo, bro. Like, oh my god, Bills fan. All right. Bills, I feel that's for you, still man. far away. Bills, I thought the Bills had a shot, <laughs> but you know what? Maybe next year. So that'll be fun. Oh, that TV would have been great watching the playoffs, right? So maybe next year. Getting ready. And and we're gonna wrap up soon, guys. Uh, we've run. Can you believe we're Two hours. I was afraid that late Valentine's Day and the TVs for the ladies, we would only have maybe an hour's worth of content. But you guys delivered you go all day. with your questions, man. Awesome, awesome. And Dylan has a follow up. Thank you for the super chat, Dylan. What do you believe is the path manufacturers must take to get self emissive displays under ten thousand at the ninety five one hundred inch plus size to compete with the mini LED volume, Dylan? Consu okay, so. Consumers have to be willing. Okay, let me tell you why it's so inexpensive from BOE, CSOT, Hisense, right? All these people that have these 100 inches. They have so much. Okay, so the materials are cheaper. LCD is easy to make larger, but that's why the DSC kind of sucks, right? The dirty screen effect on these TVs are not great, but people are willing to accept it. On an OLED as a premium product, they got to clean that up. That's more expense for them to make sure their manufacturing is spot on. Because people who buy OLEDs, they have very low tolerance for bad DSE. LCD TVs, ah, you know what? You you guys screwed me over on the Visual five years ago. I'm used to it now. And so, <laughs> <Do it again. laughs> dirty screen effect, guys. And so they're like, ah. It's expected that LCD TVs don't have great grays, right? So you put on a gray pattern, 15%, 5%, it'll be all splotchy, but they all look like that. All of them, whether it's a $2,000 LCD TV or a $800, it's all over the place. And so they get to save money on quality control. The yields could be maxed out and people will deal with it. And OLED is a premium product. It's kind of like this. It's like asking me, when will Porsche sell an El Cheapo car so I can buy it? And the response is always buy a used Porsche. When it comes to OLED, a 95 to 100 inch is an all new size. I cannot tell you to get a used 95 100 inch because they haven't even built it yet. But no. where we are with it is I don't think they ever will because it's a chicken and egg. They cannot get it to a point where it'll be inexpensive because look at the 65 inch. Forget 95 inch. If the 65 inch right now from LG, it's at its max yield, max quality control, just everything, and its best price at the B3, we're talking B3 now, the B3 120 hertz 65 inch was still over a thousand dollars. I was hoping that it would be under a thousand. If it was under a thousand at 65 inch, just say nine hundred dollars, then there's potential. But the fact that the B3 last year never broke a thousand and stayed above a thousand does not bode well for the 100 inch size. They if they cannot get the 65 inch B3 to drop under a thousand, that's it. 
right? I yeah. mean, the B3 is their budget. I mean, they, they stripped away as much as they could, leaving only behind the bear, the one, 120 hertz panel. That's it. Last year's processor, I mean, they saved money where they could, two HDMI 2.1 ports, yep. and yet it stayed above 1,000. So I think well, I, that's the yeah. issue. Well, I think R&D is important to have to try to streamline that process. That's going to be hard to make it more efficient if they're losing money. Uh, more importantly, I think QNED is back to fight that fight. I don't think they're going to go with larger OLEDs. I think they're going to go with larger LEDs. And the QNET is a cool-looking lineup. If they can do that one FOMO for cheap, they already have an 86. If they can do that to 100, they're going to go there before they go OLED because it's a cheaper way to fight everybody else. You can't fight them with OLED. You have to fight them with another LED. I think they'll do that. with uh, their, their IPS technology is actually quite good, um, and they look pretty good. So um, I think they'll, that's the way they'll do it. I don't think they'll do it with an OLED. And, and look, guys, OLEDs are very fragile at that size, extremely. We've handled them. They are, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, yep. They can't ship those the same way. It's a whole other liability. I can't see them going for it. And Redmond's striking back hard. Thank you for your generosity. Super chat. FOMO. Oh, great story. Another Samsung story. I have a mom a Samsung story for you. At Christmas, I watched a movie with her, and she had it on Vivid. <laughs> she <laughs> has the Q90C. I was almost blinded. That's a and great put it on story. Mode. She complained I broke the lights inside her TV. <laughs> you made it accurate? She's like, this thing looks like a dog crap. <laughs> I it's hate like, the filmmaker moment. It's like, wait, you broke it? Bring it back. She's like, excuse okay, me, so. sweetheart. Come back over the house and put my. What's so funny is I know Redman. You grab that remote, like, look, girl, I got you. Let me <laughs> let me show you how the calibrators make it look. And she was like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> you turned off all the motion settings. No, isn't that better? Isn't that better? She's like, uh, get your bass so back over the house. Redman actually did right. He 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 went and watched all of our videos. He, he, he wrote down the settings by hand, right? Classy and I, and you share settings. He wrote it all down. He's like, I can't wait. And then it's Christmas. He sneaks in like the Grinch, right? Yeah. <laughs> mom, mom, mom is like cooking. Susie what Sue puts her to bed. Right? It's like boom, 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 boom. Not going to say anything, right? She comes in. The hell? Yeah. Some she's TV's like, broken. She's like, uh, this, thing's, this, this thing's a big thing. Yeah. And Samsung filmmaker mode is 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 rough looking, man. It can be really muddy, but she's used to like the reds bleeding everywhere. Well, the, you know, sharp is like on ten. And here's yep. the thing, right? We talk about filmmaker mode, and by the way, Samsung's filmmaker mode is solid now, for the most part. You put in filmmaker mode, you're, you're pretty much there. Most people don't like filmmaker mode, right? No, I can't I mean, stand it. I, I don't know about this, but and and hey, this reminds me. As we get older, our vision starts to go, right? Like, like my hearing is starting to go. And so we listen to music at different equalizer settings, right? What used to be pumping up the bass, I'm going to have to raise the, the vocals a bit, right? So my equalizer settings are adjusting to my aging ears. And I think your aging vision, you know, as things look blurry, you're going to over sharpen things. You want it oh, dynamic, like... right? Contrast is better yeah. because you lose contrast as you get older. And she's like, I can't see. She's like, what happened? Well, they ship them, but, but when you ask the manufacturers, they ship, people say they ship them in store mode. That's not accurate. They don't ship them in store mode. There is a retail mode mm -hmm. that is more vivid. They put them on vivid, but the they ship in standard because it's a mixture of very vibrant, some accuracy. They don't ship in vivid. So what's funny is the dual cell Hisense shipped in that eco mode and i was like yikes <laughs> it was like emo eco filmmaker mode um so that was bad but they ship it in those modes for a reason that people could just leave them and they get a little bit of mix of everything yeah 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 you don't like you don't like yeah. filmmaker in a z9k <laughs> fair dartman has a z9k is that it yeah he's like ah, uh, yeah i need my four thousand nits you know my reputation for TVs is actually, you know, just showing this. My parents don't think I'm a very good TV reviewer, by the way. I mean, they're, they're like, yeah. don't ever ask. I mean, he might have a YouTube channel, but don't ever ask FOMO to, to get you a TV. Look what he did with our TV. So they, well, I they, love how you replaced their TV with a freaking bezel-less 900T. They're like, yeah, I can't hear it. 
All, all they can talk about is how bad the audio is. So between Redmond and I, we got senior citizens who either can't see their TV or can't hear their TV. And so at the end of the day, use case, my friends, who is- So I wonder, if, I, wonder, I wonder if somebody said to him, you know, your son just hit like 150,000 subscribers. Really? He's not that good at what he does. I know. It's like- <laughs> He kind of sucks. Heck? Him and that tall they're, guy. They're not senior citizens, <laughs> that's for sure. Redman, fix my TV, <laughs> son. Oh man. And 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 Lisa clearly is not like my mom. She turns off eco mode and uses max brightness. You know, my mom saw the electrical bill and she actually called me and, and asked me if I turned off eco mode and 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 messed up her TV because <laughs> the electric bill went up. She made yeah. me go there and you know, maybe it went off. So I had to double check. I go, look, mom, eco mode is on, right? Everything is on. The blue light thing, eye protection is on, all of that is on. No. It, it was not this. It was like, I think she was using the dryer, the air fryer more often than not. But I had to convince her that I didn't go in there and, and change her TV settings. Yeah, you know, not everyone is the same. I See, do light use the lights. I off. use I use it all. I use it now. Yep, I sensor. use it for my mom too. I told mom, look, I, the light sensor is it. on, mom. If you turn off the lights, the TV gets even dimmer. So that way... It, power drops even further so what i like about the light sensor though for those of you that missed it is that the light sensor will take your brightest preset and then in a way calibrate it down to custom so it'll make it very accurate and we saw it go we saw the x95 go from standard preset to match the reference monitor and that was a magic trick that i've tried and it works so the light sensor is not a power saving it's more about bringing your image more accurate. Sure. Yeah, it does dim, Lisa. It, it's definitely made to dim to help your eyes, but yep. it doesn't just get dimmer. It brings everything more accurate. It actually changes it. That's why you can change the curve on it in the sen in the se settings. I use it. I love it. I think it's great. My A95K has the light sensor on. Uh, my 65 inch is in the bedroom. That's why I don't care if it's bright or not. I mean, it's in the bedroom, right? So our A95K has the light sensor on the bedroom to make sure that when my daughter, you know, she comes in there and watches TV, I don't want it too bright because she won't be able to fall asleep. So I want to make sure. I have it on behind me. Well, yeah, it looks great. Now let's end it with this. I, I think we're going to wrap up with this question because it's going to be an ongoing theme. And I think this also relates. And we did to this video. So Valentine's. go watch it. Go yes, watch we mine. Did this video. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about Matt finish being, I liked it, Brian. Well, watch the video and see. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the thumbnail. I'm like, what do you guys think of the matte finish TV screen thing? So I, and I think maybe Brian's mind might have changed. With the theme of Valentine's Day, what TVs do the ladies like? I think the ladies, except for Lisa, likes the matte finish because it allows you to display art, no glare. It's very practical. It's good enough. On the right yeah. TV, the matte finish will look phenomenal. But let's talk about not the frame, but the S95D. I think the S95D with the new third gen panel that's 3000 nits will look amazing on the matte finish because between the brightness to overcome ambient light and the reflection, anti-reflection of ambient light, this TV is going to stand out against other TVs in the same room where you're going to see the glare. This is designed to kill the G4 side by side at Best Buy. That's in what the, I'm saying. In, yeah, now, in that specific it may not room, win the yeah. shootout. But at Best Buy, yeah. I think this will people will buy it. It doesn't matter if it's QD OLED or not. The fact that it has a matte finish. Well, yep. Brian, what do you think? You think that's now uh, for us now for us enthusiasts, what you guys would like to hear is the comparison at Samsung display versus last year's S95C, basically, and their current QD OLED. It annihilated it. So Gen 3 versus Gen 2, QD OLED raw destroyed it. The S95D versus last year's WRGB OLED, it tied it in a dark room. So think about that for a second. If the image quality is similar, it was a WRGB versus a QD OLED, and they did not look very, they did not look different. It didn't look like QD OLED anymore. The WRGB OLED was cleaner, had better blacks, where the QD OLED from Samsung Displays blew it away. So I don't use it. <laughs> and once we get the TVs, uh, we're going to compare it side by side yeah. in a, maybe two months when the TVs come here. So you're going to get a G4, uh, G4 versus S95D. We'll see if the hype matches either one, right? We'll, we'll end the 900D 
the Samsung 900D with its latest and greatest 8K AI processor. Now let's end with this comment. Scott Coakley, hello, my friend. Welcome. FOMO, try the edge of tomorrow, because I like that movie. I had to mention it. I will try the edge of tomorrow. I haven't tried it with any of my new TVs. With Tom Cruise at the end of the movie, my TV struggles. So I will download that on Kaleidoscape, push it through, and we'll see if it struggles. And Scott, how did it struggle? Let me know, and uh, you know, I'll see. All right, guys. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you, Brian, as always. My pleasure. Awesome. My pleasure. Look and for our happening? Valentine. What, we'll look for. So we're going to film, not maybe not tonight, but tomorrow, we're going to film our Valentine's Day video, which is really, the video is going to be our, hey, Jen, how are you? Oh, answer Jen real quick before we go. Oh, yes. Uh, so, Jen, uh, I'm going to talk about it, actually. So we, I, I looked at a couple of articles, and we're talking about specs. So the, it's it's a specs thing. Forget subjectivity, whether it looks or doesn't look, because there's so much involved in reviewing image quality the source straight up specs the it doesn't even do 100 percent dci p3 so the color gamut is not as wide i mean that's straight up official i think it only goes up to 90 percent dci p3 so already on color gamut it doesn't match most modern tvs today which all hit above 95 percent it's not i think it's like maybe just above 90 percent something like that i'll show the spec uh, in my video, my FOMO show later. And also it's motion, as I've mentioned, right? So there are a few specs that on paper falls behind. And that's just, it is what it is. So yeah, Jennifer, we'll, we'll talk about that. And maybe later on when I finish my review <laughs> <laughs> of it, yeah. we'll talk about it. But yeah, so they're talking paper specs now that they've had a chance to pull things apart and, and dive into the actual paper specs. So go, wait a minute. This is not the best of the best. This is just okay. <clears> oh, <throat> the form factor. But back to what we're saying, the video we're going to have yes. for you guys on Wednesday is going to be our true picks for what we would buy for ourselves. Our favorite, not prototypes, yes. what we would buy for ourselves and yes. why. That'll be the Valentine's Day video for Wednesday on my channel. Uh, check out my channel, by the way. We love you guys. Thank you so much for jumping in with us. Yes. Hope you enjoyed the oh, stream. And, you know, and Brian, just... just just asking on the detail about that. What we would buy now or what would we would we buy no, as what, a 2024 model? So as we hate this term, as influencers, we typically don't recommend what we would buy because we don't buy anything um, for ourselves in that regard to keep. But if we were going to buy what out of what you saw, your top three of what you're going to keep, what you're looking forward to tangible has to be real, not micro LED. And what okay. three are you so, so on? So that'll be the form of the video. What is it you want yourself and why okay. top models? That way you guys, because everyone asks us after we recommend to you what you want, you then ask me what I want. So we'll do a dedicated video on it and we'll talk about our, our most desired TVs. That's great, yeah, because a lot of sales will be coming up too. So if it happens to be one of those TVs, go for it. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lisa, for coming by. You're welcome. So we will end today's stream. Until next time, my friends. Stop the FOMO. Bye, guys.